Uh, uh, that's actually pretty funny. It's the little things that make me smile. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Talking Heads, everyone. Episode 152, your once week live show for the latest in beer and tech news. I'm Jeff. I'm John. If you've never seen the show before, we broadcast every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Pacific time right here on YouTube. You can also catch the audio replay on Anchor FM or wherever your favorite podcasts are found. We talk beer, we talk tech, we talk games, pop culture, entertainment, usually some Star Trek. We do drink alcohol on the show, but we always strive to have the content friendly in both language and content. Uh, All Super Chats are read out on the air, assuming they meet our family-friendly criteria. And if you want to get access to the super secret chat and take part in the after party that happens every after every show, uh, consider joining the Patreon. Link is down in the video description. You'll get exclusive access to the Discord server where you can chat with myself, John, Rhett, Steve, all the hosts from Talking Heads, and become part of the awesome community over there. That was pretty good. Welcome to the show. Thank you. (laughs) I'm on fire tonight. I know. How's it going this week, John? How you doing? Uh, you know, it's it's uh, it's been one of those like up and down weeks. One day is just like, oh my gosh, this is crazy, and then the next day is, oh, there's nothing to do. But I'm still on that high of the the day before. So uh, I think it was Monday. I had a horrible Monday. Uh, I woke up to my wife like screaming, coming in the bedroom, honey, honey, the kitchen's flooded. And our rabbit no. chewed through the uh, ice line for the refrigerator. Yep. And it was like the <laughs> one spot it was open, that crack between the counter and the fridge, you know, because you just can't get it quite flush. So there's like just that like quarter of an inch apart that's like, you know, bent over, snipped it right there. And yep. it was like spraying for hours. Yeah, it was yep. everywhere. And I was like, Ah oh, man, I don't like this rabbit anymore. <laughs> I don't think you liked that rabbit before. No, I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> uh, I've lost so many wires to this this rabbit. Actually, even the previous one too. Yep. So, yeah. Ah. Uh. <sighs> well, luckily I haven't flooded anything this week. <laughs> but it's it's been a hectic one already. Um, and, uh, YouTube is hating me this week because apparently I'm only allowed to post certain content. And if my content does not include servers, they decide not to recommend my video to like anyone. So yeah, the last two videos have been like, just like buried, like just dead and done. So all all your titles will be servers and more. Right. (laughs) Uh, there was a video that had nothing to do with servers and I put server in the, uh, in the keywords and I actually got a boost from it. (laughs) <laughs> Every video now will just like have your server in the back. Like, oh yeah, that's my server. That's my server. Now yeah. we're going to talk about this instead. Though. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Suddenly it's a vlog. <laughs> <laughs> right. So yeah, that's been a little, little bit frustrating this week. Stay in your lane, Jeff. Yeah. yeah they're just like, uh, uh-uh. yeah. Linus and everyone else is like, no, 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 put him down, put him down. He's getting too good. He's getting right, too right. good. Exactly. Bring him down. Exactly. All right. Uh, Well, I've got one beer ready. Uh, Do you have your beer ready? I do have my beer ready. Uh, I have uh, a hazy IPA. I have Back Into Haze by Melvin. Ooh, Melvin. It's been a while since I've had a Melvin beer. Yeah, actually, I got 6.5%, so just a standard IPA. But uh, Costco had a four-pack of this for $7.99. Nice. So two bucks a beer. Can't can't beat that. <laughs> and uh, I got a beer that I am just waiting to be uh, cease and desisted from uh, Google for use of intellectual property. But it's hilarious. It's from a local brewer called Binary Brewing, uh, which I had never heard of, but apparently they're up in Beaverton. Um, oh, yeah, and uh, it is the 404 Nut Brown <laughs> with the uh, little chrome T-Rex at the top. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is an, uh, it's an old English nut brown ale. Um, and, uh, apparently it's, they're trying to do it a very traditional style with just a little bit of a Northwest flair. So a little bit more hop than you would normally get. Um, but, uh, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, 5.9%. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, uh, browns to me are very, uh, tricky. 
Yeah. Um, I don't think they they should have a whole lot of hot flavor. And unfortunately, here in the Northwest, we put too much and it ends up being like a brown IPA. Right. <laughs> you know, if it is, I want nutty and malty. Right. Um, so uh, I was reading the back of the can and it actually goes over a classic done just right is hard to find. No matter how much we searched our quarries into a great northern uh, English brown ale, we're coming back not found. That's 404. Uh, uh, it was time to build. We wanted a nut brown with coffee aromatics and a nutty filbert mid-palate. And for those who don't know, filberts are what we call hazelnuts because yeah. they're filberts, not hazelnuts. Oh, yes. uh, <laughs> uh, we <laughs> sought a light texture with a lingering dry finish for enhanced drinkability. We made it our own by balancing it out with a gentle herbal hop characteristic. So trying to stay original with just a touch of hop. So we'll see how they did. Yeah. Um curious i wonder what hop they used Did I? there's just a touch of hop at the back just, just a touch yeah that's actually quite good i'm impressed um it's definitely malty um nutty coffee it's all there <laughs> i'll take it yeah uh, now, didn't, did you get a four pack of that or just the one? I got a four pack. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I'll send one your way. Yeah. I got, uh, I got some stuff, uh, coming in. I think it's the ninth, uh, and some for you. So I'll just, I got, I got some stuff already in the fridge too. Yeah. I've got, uh, I've got like five or six saved up for yeah, you. I, think. So I was like, oh, this is <laughs> probably about the time I, we've both got probably enough saved up. It's like, oh, let's just meet up. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Uh, let's see. What are people in chat drinking tonight? Oh, yeah. People are watching us. Yep. Yeah. By the way, all the shows, uh, up to this point, the first 10 or 15 minutes have just been us catching up because we don't get to see each other yeah, anymore. Yeah, <laughs> Usually we're like, come to each other's houses and like 30 minutes ahead, like, ah, what's going on? Yeah. We might have a cocktail before the show. Who knows? You know, whatever. <laughs> it, it's happened. It's happened. Uh, I miss living within walking distance of Steve. That's for sure. <laughs> um, check out this server vacuum. <laughs> uh, for those who don't know, I actually did a parody on the Dyson ads when they when they came out a couple years ago. Uh, it was at the end of one of my videos. Uh, should have Linus on the show. Betty drinks bottles and James. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Tikaz drinking a Capital Brewery Oktoberfest. Excellent. Yeah, the nice. Oktoberfest brews are starting to come out. Uh, Ryan's got a Conky Dong 4 Up. Conky Never Dong? heard of that one. Conky Dong. Mm. Uh, let's see. Uh, Tikaz says it's a Marzen uh, style lager. Taught a Stone Brewery co collab with Modern Times, Wizards and Gargoyles. Oh, I wanted to have that one. I, it, I've been looking for that one, and yeah, I haven't, they haven't a gotten it in yet. coffee IPA. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it just does not sound like it should mix. Right, but neither does the, uh, like the Rogue uh, Cold Brew IPA. That's true. And that, and that one's fantastic. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Skull drinking a Rye Manhattan. Excellent. Uh, Emil, Jackie O Mystic's Mama Dry Hopped, 7%. Uh, Novella Hub, uh, Shakopee, uh, Brew Hall, or Shakopee. I'm sorry, I still can't pronounce that right. Someone needs to say that name to me. Shikopee? Novella, if you're on, if you're on the after show, can you say that name to me? Because for some reason, my brain just doesn't want to get around it. Uh, Shakopee Brew Hall. Yeah, uh, apparently it's Shakopee or something like that. Oh. Um, uh, but Herd of Turtles, Barrel Age Stout. Uh, I have uh, version one, bu bu uh, yeah, version one Buffalo Trace. Yeah, Novella Hub sent one of those my way, so it's actually in my fridge right now, along with version two. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Maddie's drinking water tonight. Water is totally allowed. That's cool. Uh, drinking some Virgin Di Diabetes, aka Cherry Pepsi. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, Glenn Levitt, 12 year. Excellent. Love that scotch. It's uh, always a solid one to go with. Richard, Boston Lager. Uh, Reverend, uh, just cracked a Cellar Eyes uh, Strata Oak Aged Pale Ale. That sounds interesting. Yeah. Definitely sounds interesting. Shakopee. Shakopee. 
Okay. Shaq Opie? Okay. Sh- Shaq Opie. Shaq, Shaq Opie or Shaq Opie? Shaq Opie Shaq- is what I'm going to say. Okay. I, Although he did it... say O. Oh, yeah, so... it says Shaq Opie. Shaq Opie. Shaq Opie? Shaq Opie? Yeah, I think I'm gonna, so. I'm going to send you some of our Native American <laughs> words that we have around say here. Say Willamette. <laughs> yeah. Shamawa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Puyallup. Just say Oregon. Yeah. Just say Oregon. There you go. Yeah. Say so we've we've got our words too. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I... Welcome to the show, everyone. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Let's get it started. Um so We'll get into all of the RTX talk uh, that's been going on for about two weeks now. Uh, But uh, AMD decided they wanted to get in on the RTX talk too by dropping a little shade at NVIDIA. (laughs) (laughs) Um, According to AMD, uh, Navi 2, uh, Big Navi, RDNA 2, sorry, RDNA 2, Big Navi, Navi 20, Navi 21, whatever you want to call it, uh, will not have Ampere-like shortages when the RX 6000 series is released. (laughs) Um, Now, uh, everyone kind of knows the story at this point. The 3000 series RTX cards were virtually impossible to find at launch. Now, we have seen a fair amount get out there, and I know demand has been high. Uh, and, And I kind of went over this a couple of weeks ago, Demand is high because this is the first true graphics refresh that we've had since Pascal. Yeah. And so if you bought a Pascal card, if you had a GTX 1080, there was no reason at all to upgrade to the 20 series uh, because you'd be spending the same amount of money for the same performance. So you already had a 1080. There was no reason to upgrade to a 2070 or a 2080 because it's like, I'm not going to drop another $800 for 15%. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. Um, so there was no compelling reason to upgrade from the 10 series to the 20 series. Now I'll say that has gone away and even more so between the 20 and the 30, but especially if you're still on Pascal or earlier, if you're on Maxwell, especially man, get on it. Um, but, uh, yeah, demand has been quite high and they've been sold out everywhere since launch. Um, I mean, it's almost like a old school, uh, console. You know, big game console back when Super Nintendo was out or mm-hmm. N64, you'd go there, boom. So we, when the Wii was out. Right. Oh, finding a Wii for two years, two Christmases yeah. straight. Yeah. It was impossible to get a Wii. Um, anyway, uh, Frank Azor, Azor, excuse me, uh, he's the chief architect of gaming solutions over at AMD. Uh, he jumped on Twitter and was uh, poking a little bit of fun at some people. Uh, so random Twitter uh, user Andre says, well, not going to be able to pick up the 39 today, which means uh, I'm going to, uh, which means my work is going to be effed for the next little bit. Uh, can they at least release a new Quadro so I can get my work done? $10 says AMD will be a paper launch too. And Frank responded, I look forward to taking your $10. Winky face um, <laughs> or smiley face. Right. Now that's literally the story is he posted something on Twitter that says it will not be a paper launch. But the fact that AMD, an official, you know, spokesman for AMD, you know, the head guy for gaming architecture uh, is coming out and saying, this ain't going to be no paper launch. Yeah. Um, So fingers crossed that they don't get botted and bought out. And (laughs) man, if the bots start winning and, and the scalpers become a real issue, which they totally could, by the way. Oh, yeah. Um, man, it's this can screw with uh, with the economics of scale and economics of just retail for quite some time to come if uh, if companies aren't able to get a handle on this. Yeah, this is going to be really hard to even get a handle on, though, too. I mean, you can't even just limit someone to one purchase per sale. I mean, that's what the bots end up doing anyways for right. you. So it's how do you get around that logistics? Uh, right. You know, how do they solve this? And you can't say, oh, it's in-store purchase only. Um, I guess maybe you can say like $10 off if you're in-store purchase, or but that doesn't really make it all that worth it. Yeah. Um, it that's really, really hard. Also, at the same time, Technically, it's a free market. <laughs> yeah, that that is unfortunate. Um, 
I, I saw someone on Twitter earlier today. Um, they made the mistake of tweeting at Jay's two cents and, and tweeting something rather stupid. <laughs> I'm just going to say. Well, he trolls people so hard back. Oh, he does. But but the statement itself was stupid. Uh, they said NVIDIA should make it illegal to resell your card for the first 60 days to deal with the scalpers. And Jay simply tweeted back, NVIDIA doesn't make the laws. Um, but that whole statement got me thinking. It's like, there is nothing NVIDIA can do about this um, beyond denying at the point of sale if they suspect you might be a bot. Um, but they have no say in resale. That's the whole purpose of possession is yeah. once it's my property, I can do with my, my property what I want to do with my property. And if I want to buy it and then resell it for a 20% markup, it's kind of okay. Yeah. The the community might think you're a jerk, but there's nothing wrong with it. Um, and unfortunately, that's the world we live in. Yeah, it, it is kind of a jerk move. Yeah. Well, it's a jerk move, but that's how some people make their money. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, those people are usually jerks. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Unless I'm buying from them and I get it for a deal. Then right. they're my friend. Right. For that one minute, they're my friend. Yeah. Um, well, right before the show went live, also, I, I tweeted out uh, my frustration with eBay today. And uh, how, does no one know how to haggle anymore? Oh, gosh. Uh, seriously. Like, I, I feel like I'm... Did you did you do a, a best offer or something like that? I I I posted uh, some camera equipment on eBay. Oh yeah, okay. Um, I posted a camera and one of my my motorized slider kits, and uh, posted it. Buy it now or best offer. I don't like dealing with the auction. I don't like waiting. I just like saying here's a decent price, and I always price it pretty aggressively. Here's a decent price. If you want to offer me a little less, you can offer me a little less, or just hit buy it now when we're good. But buy it now or best offer is usually what I do. Um, so I posted uh, my camera for $900 and pretty good deal at $900 because it came with a lens, came with three batteries, came with uh, a DC adapter, came with extra cables and a cage and, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Like it was a good deal. Um, uh, I got no fewer than four offers for $300 or less. Oh, geez. So a third of my asking price. It's like, you're not even being realistic. No. Um, I mean, yeah, you, you start off low, but not that low. You start off right. at, at a reasonable low. You're like, okay, here's where I want to pay. Now I'm going to go down 25% from that. Right. Um, yeah, you start at like 25. If, if, you, if you offer more or less than 75% of my asking price, you're not even getting a response. Or yeah. you're getting like, I'm gonna counter offer you with like a dollar increase. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so I got like three or four of those offers, like 20 cents on the dollar kind of things. Um, I also got seven individual messages saying, what's the lowest price you'll take? I have money and I'm ready to buy. <laughs> well, I hope you have money and you're ready to buy because that's how eBay works. But secondly, <laughs> that's how that's not how haggling works. You've made no offer. You make me an offer and I'll tell you if I accept it. That's how negotiations start. My listing didn't say $900 or 700, whatever. <laughs> My listing said $900 or your best offer. I'm not going to argue my own price down. <laughs> well, maybe they said, meant, thought best offer meant your best offer to them because they have money and they're ready to buy. In that case, it's $900. <laughs> I've already listed my best offer. <laughs> hey, I don't know. I Still, even with eBay, I'd rather deal with most eBay stuff than like Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist. Yeah. I hate those. 99% of those are, hey, I'm interested. All right. Yeah. You know, is it still available? And yeah, then ghost. It, and then ghost. It's like, oh my. And then you have hundreds of those. And yes, 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 it is. Yes, it is. I mean, yep. me trying to even sell my broken fridge, I got like 120 people. Is it still available? Yes. And then ghosted. Yep. You know? Yep. Yep. So luckily the camera sold. For only $40 less than I asked. 
Well, now we know. They submitted a reasonable offer. Yeah. I counter I counter offered back and and we came to an agreement. That's how haggling works. Yeah, I mean, basically you, they got free shipping. I mean, so what? You did you did 900 bucks. I mean, that's usually what you go for is Right. So my my standard move is okay, if it was like $900 I'd offer I'd probably offer about 800 and say yeah. 800 plus free shipping is what I would say. Right. Like, hey, I, how about you pay the shipping and I'll give you 800 right now. We'll yeah. do this. that that's what I would that would have been And my that's a reasonable thing. offer. Yeah. So, and then you probably would have countered been like, let's do nine, you know, uh, 850, we'll call it good. Yep. And I would have been like 840, we're good to go. That would have probably done the deal. Yep. No, uh, they offered 840, I countered at 860 and offered them free shipping on top of it. So basically the same price. Yeah. But, uh, you know, they thought they got something out of it. We got, Even we're all they, happy. Yeah. Ex- or, or yeah, or, or that, you know, you yeah. offered me that if I didn't say free shipping. Yeah. yeah. It's. You're not going to get the steal of the century. No. You know. Maybe I should have asked to trade for Mustang parts. No junk. I know what I got. <laughs> yeah. Gosh. <laughs> we'll trade for Mustang or Harley parts. Yes, I've been on Craigslist a lot in my time. All right. What else do we have? Let's get into some of the RTX news. Uh, so we'll start off with some rumors for RTX 3000 series. And that is uh, that the RTX 3060 Ti is pretty much already ready for production and will probably launch a couple of weeks after the 3070. Yeah. Um, Which is, well, they're saying what? Might even be before the standard 3060. Right. Um, yeah. And, and I don't see why it may launch at the same time as the 3060 um but i think everything is going to be available well before christmas time well before the christmas rush late november yeah Um, i I would i was gonna say this is probably gonna be late october first or second week in november yep yeah and that's kind of what they're saying for the 3060 ti is late late october um but they're going like pretty much every two weeks so september 24th um and uh or september 1st was the 3080 september 24th then they're doing october 15th now they're saying late october so probably the last week or first week of november um and then my guess would be maybe like a black friday launch for the 3060. um that's but, actually not a, that's not a bad idea too right because you can even like market that and then put like a free game bundle mm-hmm. you know that would be a pretty good i bet that would fly off the shelf yeah no absolutely um, and especially if you're able to hit that 299 price yeah. point, shall we say uh, 299, 350, somewhere right in that ballpark. And that really competes with the consoles too, because all the new consoles will be mm-hmm. coming out around Christmas time and be like new console or do, you know, the people that do have the 1080s, the 1060s, the 1070s, whatever, that are still in that area. This is going to jump them way up at right. just a standard 360, right? 3060, sorry. Yep, exactly. Um, so we do know the 3070 will be shipping with D- with GDDR6, um, unlike the 3080 and 3090, which have the GDDR6X. Uh, 3060 Ti will also have GDDR6, and it's looking like uh, 4864 for CUDA core count versus the 5800 and change for the 3070. Um, so pretty reasonable performance, only about a 20% dip from the, the, the 3070. Uh, we could be looking at 2080 level performance for 300 bucks if this all pans out. Maybe maybe 350. I, I would bet 350 uh, for the 3060 Ti. Oh, Ti. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I was basically thinking this is probably going to be about 50 bucks, maybe 75 bucks more than the right. 3060. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, my my guess is probably going to be like 275 because that's been a really popular price point for the mainstream graphics cards as of late. Uh, that's where the RX 580 and 1060 launched when they were 250 and 280. Um, they also had some lower uh, lower memory variants for like the 220 price point. That's where the the RX 580 4 gig launched. Um, same with the 3 gig uh, GTX 1060. They were both in that you know, 230 to 280 range. Um, so I would say 350 for a TI, maybe 329. I'm going to change my vote. 329. 329, so basically 330. That's yeah. a weird number. I know, but I, I'm going <laughs> to I'm gonna say 329 is my guess for the MSRP of the of the 60 TI, and I'm going to say 250 for the, for the 3060. 
Thirty um, sixty. Yeah. <sighs> That's just a weird spot then for the 3060 Ti. You said, mm -hmm. oh, God, where? But where Nvidia's are... been cramming their SKUs kind of closer and closer together. Yeah, I know. It's just it's just such a weird price point because then you're just like, I got forty bucks more, you know? Right. Yeah. That's that's the reason for those price points. Is well, I've got thirty bucks more. I might as well just upgrade to the next card. But you know what? The the one above it that I really wanted is only an extra fifty. Yeah, so I know. I do that. That's how they get you. Yeah. Um, it's part of the, the strategy is can we aim you towards a 3070 when you were uh, when you were only aiming for a 3060? Because you go, well, it's only this much more for the 3060 Ti, but then this one has a little bit more memory. Oh, but then the 3070 is only this much. And all of a sudden you've spent 170 extra dollars. <laughs> yeah. So uh, and all they had to do is like throw in a free video game in one of them. And you're right. like, oh, that, that made it worth it. That's that was a thirty dollar game right there. Yep, exactly. You know, oh, the thirty seventy comes with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I can yeah, finally I play know. an RTX. Shadow of the Tomb or, or Assassin's Creed yeah. Pirates. <laughs> you know, they need to start including control, which is the all ray traced game. They need to start including that. Yeah, see that would be a, an interesting way to go because then like here is a ray trace game offered for a ray tr a true ray tracing car mm -hmm. um to a truly experience what this computer can do or ca card can do sorry uh here is a free game that would be pretty cool yeah although i don't know how much that game costs on retail or what that would cost if they lost Yep. No, Control, I think, is only 30 bucks. It's only oh, yeah. a $30 game. So then that's right in the price point. Right. So. Yeah. Now, did we did we talk about the 3070 Ti? Um, there's been speculation of a 3070 Ti. Um, because I haven't it's on this list. Yeah. Um, I think we might have touched on it right before the launch of the 3090. Um, and, it, and it is in this list right here. Um, they're saying that a, um, that a 20 gig 3080 are going to be coming out and a 16 gig 3070 TI. Yeah. Um, and the 3080 is not going to be a TI model. It's simply going to be a higher VRAM model with the same number of CUDA cores. The 3070 will be a TI model with about 300 more CUDA cores and double the memory. Um, so yeah. Uh, 3070 Ti may eventually turn out to be the card to buy this generation. Although the 3080 sitting there at 699 is looking pretty sweet too. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. You so, know, the thing is that that 3070 is, you know, even comparable in that price point. You're just like, ah. Yeah. It's got a little bit more memory, but the CUDA cores, yeah. A lot more CUDA cores though. A lot more CUDA cores. Yeah. I guess it all depends on what you're doing. Yep. All right. Uh, let's get into the fun issue of the week. And that is that all of a sudden, every single person I've ran into on Twitter and Reddit are lifetime and fully trained and licensed and certified electrical engineers. <laughs> every single person is suddenly an expert on power delivery, filtering, what's a POS cap, what's a what's an SFP or what's an SP cap, what's an MLCC, what do they do? Why are they there? Oh, this one has this one, so they must have thought this and blah 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 blah. Wikipedia said so, Jeff. And there's a diagram on that. Well it wasn't Wikipedia. <laughs> well I Googled it. Right. And 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 then I copied and pasted the article that I read into my Twitter feed but I didn't quote it, so I made it sound like I said it. Yeah. Um, so anyway, for those who haven't been paying attention, uh, apparently NVIDIA and all of the AIBs have no idea how to design hardware. And they cheaped out on a three cent component uh, so they could save a couple of bucks and they're just gonna give you crap cards. That's the, that's the narrative. Um, for those who... I don't know, have seen launch issues before, like me, like pretty much everyone, because 
When's the last time we had a smooth hardware launch where yeah. nothing went wrong? Vista. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Um, not an electrical engineer, but I did stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night. <laughs> One of my favorite jokes of the week. Thank you, Novella Hub. Um, anyway, uh, this all started with a post uh, on Igor's lab. Um, and this is the post in question. Now, I read through this whole thing three times. And it seems to make quite a few assumptions. Now, the language there is uh, wrong component selection is plausible. However, some people took that to be a smoking gun that NVIDIA is a bunch of idiots. Or if not NVIDIA, then Asus, Gigabyte, MSI, EVGA, Zotac, yeah. P Power Color, you know, Gain Word. Every single AIB doesn't know how to design power delivery for these cards. Um, and this was all based on, I'm going to, I'm just going to come out and say it, anecdotal evidence. Um, and again, this is all, Igor's post is a theory. It's not a, this is like finite, like what the, the situation is. It's a theory as to why RTX 3080 cards are crashing to the desktop. Um, and uh, some people drew a parallel between a 3080 crashing on this system and not crashing on this system, started looking at the specific cards and started looking at the backs of the cards and like, oh, what differences are there? Oh, this one uses MLCC chips and this one uses SP caps. Um, and, uh, and took that to be, well, the one with the MLCC isn't crashing. So obviously that's the better design because they're, desi they're, they're a better power conditioner later on down the line. However, that is so oversimplifying an issue that frankly, I don't understand. Um, but power has everything to do from literally your electric company substation through the wires, into your home, through your own panel, uh, through the wires in your house, to your outlet, into the back of your computer. What's your what's the quality of your power supply? How many cables are you using? What's the rail quality of the power supply? What's the efficiency? What's the noise being generated by nearby equipment? Um, uh, what are you running in your system? Are, you know, a lot of factors. <laughs> there's a lot of factors yeah. that go into is the power delivery clean or not. Yeah. And I'm sorry, but the last component, yes, I'm going to say make or break, but remember these, these boost clocks that are failing are failing because they're boosting to the knife's edge. And if you've ever done video card overclocking before, you know that 15 megahertz one way or the other is the difference between a stable overclock at the absolute limit of what your card can deliver and blue screening three seconds into heaven or crashing outright. Um, we've all done it. We've all, you know, set that power limit to 115% and gave uh, gave core clocks 150 extra megahertz and went, and let me prayers. do 155, <laughs> 158, 160. Oh, yeah. yeah, we've all done that. And, and you dial it back down to 155 and it's golden. And, and that's what you rock. And then it crashes once every three hours. And so you dial it back to you know the next step down. And then that is your rock solid overclock and, you, and you're off and going. There was also anecdotal evidence that, well, anytime they get above two gigahertz, they're crashing. Um, however, there was evidence submitted to the contrary that maybe Nvidia aren't idiots. Maybe AIBs aren't idiots. Maybe it's just a bad driver because these crashes were number one, not happening in Linux <laughs> at the same frequencies. Um, and number two, when Nvidia released a driver update later or earlier this week, it seemingly fixed everything. Um, now, I I'm gonna go back through a couple of videos that I watched this last week from people who have multiple cards and have done multiple different stress tests on them. Uh, Paul's Hardware did a fantastic video last week where he took four cards. I believe he had a Zotac, uh, a Gigabyte, an MSI, and the Founders Edition. Um, 
So he had the Gigabyte OC, he had the, the Zotac, uh, don't remember which one, but he had four cards from four different, for one Founders and three AIBs. Yeah. Um, the Zotac, which was the the supposed cheap caps, uh, or the, the SP caps, the ones you shouldn't be using, did clock the lowest, um, but it also ran the coolest. Um, and, uh, and whatnot, but all at stock speeds, none of them crashed. And in fact, they were boosting to like 1970. Um, he then overclocked the cards as best he could in a short timeline and then wrote down all of his results. And the best results were the cards were getting to 1995 megahertz on the Founders Edition card. And that one was crashing. In fact, all four cards crashed when they increased speed and, and power limits between five and 8%. All of the cards crashed, every single one of them, including the Founders Edition, which yeah. apparently was not included in this because they, uh, you know, they did it designed right, their card right yeah. or whatever. Right. Um, so he tested four overclocks and all four crashed. Um, and he goes, I don't think there is a difference. Um, Andy Rafael, eTechnics, uh, he did a live stream this this over the weekend that was. Awesome, because he took that Zotac card that everyone said was crap right after the and right after the driver update, he had it running at 2100 megahertz at a max of like 72 degrees Celsius, and it was running rock solid. He he ran Furmark for over an hour in the test, and and I guess he had done hours and hours and hours of testing earlier. Um, and he goes before when I hit like 2050, it was crashing. Now with the new driver update, it's not crashing anymore, and it's boosting higher, or at least boosting to where. We thought it did. Yeah. But also the point to that is Paul Zotac happened to boost the lowest and crash at the lowest level. But that's, again, down to Silicon Lottery. It's not because they used cheap caps or cheaped out on a component. He just got a better overclock on one card versus another. Um, it's a frustrating issue. And I, I don't want to call anyone out in the media for making this bigger than what it was. Um, I will say Jay posted a video that, that got Igor's, um, article, a lot of traction, but I also believe people misconstrued what Jay was saying. Jay was not saying there was a smoking gun here. He said, there are some outlets that are seeing a correlation between the capacitors used on the back of the card and crashing. And then we've also seen evidence since then that says, well, that doesn't seem to be the issue. And in fact, Jay posted a video earlier today where he tests an Asus card with the MLCC chips and it runs perfectly too. And he, and he goes, you know, I'm running at 1995 megahertz and it's rock solid all day long. And with the new driver where it was crashing at that, that speed before. Um, so yeah, it- Power consumption, Jeff. It still is a power consumption, I'm telling you. <laughs> That's what it is. That's yeah. what the pictures, because the pictures on the websites are different than what I got. Right. The pictures are also done well in advance. They're usually done off of engineering samples or engineering sketches. They're often Photoshopped, right? Yeah. Who would do that? Everyone. <laughs> you build a card in Photoshop and you send it to manufacturing later. That's how these things are done. Um, but uh, yeah, everyone... Even even certified electrical engineers, you know, micro micro -elect electrical engineers who chimed in and said, "Yes, you got it right," or "No, you got it wrong." Do you really think the AIBs have incompetent engineers designing these cards at the top of their companies, all of them simultaneously, or do you think maybe it's a driver issue? Yeah, I mean, you don't sit there and think that these companies just like, "Oh, I'm going to go off that spec." build it not going to test right. anything i'm not going to do any any of that we're not going to run it through our engineers we're just going to go off that specs and just release it into the wild no right. testing whatsoever right yeah well i will right. say that this is also brought to light a couple of issues in both the review and the production cycle that i think need to be resolved uh number one nvidia doesn't release game ready drivers until reviewers can start reviewing their cards and it's usually only like four days is all reviewers get from getting the driver to here's the embargo date you can post your review yeah and they usually drop it on like a friday because they release cards on a tuesday and so if you're a reviewer you have to work all through the weekend and uh someone uh again on twitter i was having a conversation i think with hardware unboxed 
and someone goes, man, I'm really disappointed you didn't test the card this way. Or no, it was Paul's hardware. He goes, I'm really disappointed you didn't test the card this way or this resolution or this game or this whatever else. And uh, he goes, I did 14 games at two resolutions. Do you know how many, how many tests that is? A standard test for a benchmark is number one, isolation of variables. So you have to know the game inside and out. You need to know what settings apply what and, and what they change. Um, you need to be very consistent in the way you do it. You test every game with a minimum of one uh, of 120 seconds of in-game playthrough uh, three separate times. Um, so if you're doing one game at two resolutions, that's minimum six tests for one card. Okay. Now, if I need to review five for six cards for a launch preview, I, I can't just take my benchmarks from a year and a half ago with outdated drivers for the 2080 when it launched. I've got to update the, the run now because we've seen performance increases of like 15 and 20% sometimes based on driver release. Oh yeah, and then, um, then there's just installing the drivers and going and getting and, them. And, and game you, versions and, and yeah. everything else. So you need to compare apples to apples. So even if you benchmark this three months ago, you need to benchmark it again. And so you now swap out the card doing a driver uninstall and reinstall in between the card swaps. Um, you then run your tests again. So you've now testing that another six times to get those resolutions and 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 runs in. Um, and so one testing one game at two resolutions, you can end up with easily 60 tests uh, that you then have to compile into your list at the end. And testing one game, um, as simple as it sounds, it takes 30 to 40 minutes sometimes in between game loads and verifying your settings and everything else per card. Oh yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, and so even when you're quick at it, like for, uh, I think I did the 1650 launch, I think I spent 12 hours just benchmarking. And then I've got to write the review based on the results that I got benchmarking. And uh, then there's editing, then there's the graphics. Then, then there's shooting the dang video. Then there's the edit. Like, you have four days yeah. over a weekend to produce this content. It's pretty much that, one day, almost sometimes two days of just pure shooting. Right. So, um, yeah, now people are correcting me on the, uh, proper uh what to call a, a licensed engineer yes it's a licensed professional engineer not certified i i'm aware <laughs> stop arguing semantics with me you're going to lose tonight um you know what he meant gosh right. seriously um and as i said i'm not one so <laughs> um uh, licensed PEs or uh, require insurance to express an engineering opinion and have to follow strict ethical guidelines when criticizing the PE. Yes, I know. I know that uh, engineers are also upset that net network engineering is a field because they don't feel they should be able to share the engineering title with someone who's not a true engineer and, and whatnot. But then you also got the train conductors coming in. Well, they're engineers as well. Yeah. <laughs> don't Don't argue semantics with me. Um, but anyway, the, the review cycle is often very, very compressed and we have to get our opinions out. And as everyone knows, you have to be first in this race or you're last. And so you have to make that, that zero day, uh, to get your video viewed and, 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 uh, get part of the, the coverage. Um, there's also the issue that, uh, oftentimes for these large launches, reviewers get get the drivers before the AIB partners do. So the AIB partners don't even get to test their cards with game ready drivers before they go out the door. They have to rely on the specs that Nvidia gave them, but they say they'll take this voltage, this current, they they need this this frequency, this blah 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 of power delivery and build their specs based on that and hope it works. Yeah. Um What's your lowest price on that camera? <laughs> <laughs> uh, for you, the price just went up 20 bucks. Um, yeah. Uh, but that's a problem. AIBs should be able to test their cards before they have to ship them out to reviewers. You should be able to test the product that you're producing. Um, I know there's a, uh, well, we don't want benchmarks to get out in the wild before blah, 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 blah. You know what? Leaks happen and you deal with the leaks. 
but you also rely on your trusted industry reviewers that you're sending these cards to to give accurate information once the embargo lifts. And so holding it all close to your vest doesn't work. And, yep. and, and all you get is, is heartache in the end because you're even keeping your AIB business partners, the people who are making the product to ship to customers later on, they don't know if there's a problem outside of your specifications until after the reviewers have the cards in hand and are testing them and then post their results. That's when they're finding out if things are working or not. Um, so yeah, I mean, th there's still a bunch of real world applications that other people will, will just weirdly do and be like, Oh, that's how I found this error. Right. You know? Right. Um, but anyway, that's all to say all of the capacitor talk was speculation and anecdotal evidence. And but people took it as gospel because, oh, Igor's lab posted this thing and Jay wanted to get the message out there that maybe this is an issue. Oh, NVIDIA is a bunch of idiots. No, <laughs> that's not what this was. And, and in fact, the driver update this week kind of showed that. Andy got on a live stream and ran Furmark on what's supposedly the worst design out there. And it ran to 2100 megahertz for an hour on Furmark. Um, yeah. That's not to say the process was was well executed. That's not to say there weren't problems. That's not to say that there, there might be some truth to the accusations as well, that the capacitors are bad. EVGA posted a statement that they found an issue with some of their capacitors on the back of the board and they will be making uh, remedies to them before they go to retail. So EVGA hasn't had much stock because they had to... Uh, change the capacitor layout. They, they decided to go with the MLCC. But you know the problem with speculation like this from the consumer standpoint, when this is someone posts an article and then someone follows it up and says, this might be a problem, but then all of the fanboys get their teeth out and get ready to say, ha ha, they screwed up. We finally caught them. They're... Argh. It's not they're, as good as they said. It's not they're as good not as they the said. Messiah. Right. Um, and, and they screwed up and I can't believe they're a bunch of idiots. Right? Um, the problem with that and the problem with people getting so vitriolic about perfection from these manufacturers and from these OEMs is that in the end, next graphics card release, you know what's going to be on every reviewer's list is to look at the capacitors on the back of the card. So now that's a consideration of whether or not you want to buy a graphics card or not, is what capacitors are the final filter before it gets to the GPU itself. Regardless of the construction of the card, regardless of the power delivery leading up to it, regardless of Buildzoid's breakdown of the VRMs, it's going to be, well, this one has MLCCs and I heard those were better because blah, 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 blah. That's going to be this, the, the, the line from now on. And you know what? People are going to take this and they're going to look at AMD's cards. And they go, well, AMD only used six P caps. I, I don't want to use those now. Well, I know it's going I'm to definitely like, going to buy NVIDIA you, because you know, AMD a, a, cheaps out on their capacitors. Or, or it's going to be AMD is going to like make this and put as a, we don't use those capacitors. Right. Yeah. It, it's going to become a marketing thing now. Yeah. Um, you know, for a, a couple of years ago, um, uh, was it Gigabyte and ASRock? Uh, got raked over the coals by Buildzoid because they quote unquote lied about the phase delivery of their VRMs on their motherboards. Um, and he, they were talking about like B360 motherboards, like like entry level coffee like motherboards. Um, and Gigabyte, Gigabyte and ASRock both said we have we have 12 by four phase delivery on our VRMs. And uh, Buildzoid goes, well, they're doubling it up. So it's a, it's a six by four, not a 12 by four. Get it right. You know, like you, you guys need to label it right. Well, phase doubling happens all the time. That's that's a common practice in the industry. And it's still technically called a 12 phase, but you can also call it a doubled six. It's nomenclature. But all of a sudden, every single person on, on Reddit and Twitter and everywhere else came out of the woodwork and they're a VRM expert and they will accept nothing less than 12 phase power delivery for a 65 watt processor that they're going to put into it. And it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. Um, 
I'm not an electrical engineer. I'm, I'm not a licensed professional engineer, as, as I suppose I should call it. Um, I'm, I'm just a consumer, like all of you. I, I buy my graphics cards one at a time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you, I've seen you come out of the store with two. <laughs> okay, maybe, maybe three and four at a time. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I'm ca I'm counting the double GPUs that I have uh, down yes, there. Like, We've got. Uh, uh, ah, damn it! There's, they caught me in that one. <laughs> there's four Tesla K10s. There's a Grid K40, which is actually a four GPU card. There's two of my S7150 X2. So all of those are dual or quad GPU cards. I've got my three GTX 690s over here. I've got my two uh, my two Tesla K6s over here. K60s over here. So yeah. Okay, maybe I buy them a little more often. But <laughs> but I'm still a consumer. And you have to understand, I don't understand what I'm buying half the time when it comes to the electrical delivery systems. That's not what I'm good at. I'm good at using things in a server environment. I'm good at networking. I'm good at, uh, at pretty much any consumer level build. Um, and I'm a moderate overclocker. I'm not great certainly not great um but but i can get around and i can overclock boost you know you? decently I've, I've boosted a couple i've boosted a time or two um but the only time you need to go out and buy an overbuilt product is when you're buying an overbuilt cpu so the only time you need that 12 by four power phase delivery is if you're buying a 9900K and you're shooting for world records. If you're planning on doing LN2, that's the only time that power delivery comes into question. Do you know what the power delivery on my, uh, uh, my Epic motherboard is? I have an Epic server motherboard that is certified for a 220 watt SP3 Epic 2 uh, Epic Rome CPU. It'll do the 64 core uh, bad boy. Uh, it's a four phase power delivery. There's there's literally four VRMs and 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 uh, and four chokes on it. It's it's a piddly little power delivery because that's all servers require. And you know what? That's all your consumer board requires too. But because of this arms race, all of a sudden we're getting 12 phase power delivery on a B450 motherboard. Yeah. Because someone said we needed one. And now we're going to get MLCC capacitors on the back of every video card, whether we need them or not, regardless of what the engineering team says, regardless of what the power delivery is, that's what we're going to get now. Because well, someone said, and someone made a point that NVIDIA cheaped out and now we're going to pay for it. Someone will just redesign them and they'll come up with a brand new name for them, but it'll actually be the cheapest version possible. Right. You know, and they'll be like, way better. We got the third option. This is the uh, Ultra 7 Fast Capacitors 76. Yeah. It looks like that cheap one, but really it's not. Yeah. We just rebranded it. Skull <laughs> says, or it'll give AIBs the justification to put all MLCC caps and add tw 10 to $20 more for military grade caps or yeah. Japanese caps. Because um, that's the thing. Um, now, there are times and when that works to the consumer's advantage. There's uh, there's coil caps versus solid state caps. If you look back to even the mid 2000s, most motherboards came with with uh, with coil caps. Um, all of a sudden, we made this transition to solid state caps because they last pretty much forever, um, and they don't eventually explode and leak and ruin your motherboard. Um, and so we're better for that now, <laughs> but. This isn't one of those situations. Um, but yeah, it's it's absolutely ridiculous what what the media will say, e even in speculation. Even in speculation, the media can put something out there that consumers will take and run and take it completely out of context and take it as gospel and then demand that the industry change to fix this egregious error. And in the end... The only thing that happens is we pay more and NVIDIA issues a driver fix and everything starts working anyway. Yeah, I know. It, well, it just shows us that NVIDIA does know what they're talking about. Um, this person, again, like you said, 
won't be raked over the coals. Uh, everyone will still be looking at these compa capacitors. And I do believe, was it Skull who said that? Uh, yeah, it, it, it's probably going to bring everything. The prices will go up because they're going to say military grade or Japanese yep. grade or whatever. And it's going to give them an excuse to just raise the price on some stuff. Yep. Or, or it's going to give an excuse of like, oh, okay, here's version two. We're going to charge $20 more because it's the military yep. grade stuff. Or you can buy these with a really bad capacitor and just gamble you know, on your money, whether it works or not, when you overclock it, even though you don't need to. Yeah, bad VRMs are good if they have a heat sink over them, confirmed for sure. That's another thing is VRM temperatures. VRMs are designed to run at 110 C. Anyone who sees 110 C on a on a temperature indicator on their board usually goes, oh my God, my computer's gonna blow up. Yeah. And but caps can run that hot. Um, in fact, related to the, the Gigabyte VRM story was uh, someone did a piece on Gigabyte's VRMs were reaching like 95 degrees Celsius and that's, and that's just unacceptable and whatnot. And Gigabyte went, what? And so two years ago at CES, they brought out a Z390 motherboard with a 9900K and they had it overclocked to five gigahertz. And they had the heat sink removed. And in the CES booth, they had an infrared temperature gun that you can point at the VRM and see that it was running at 75 degrees. It was a marketing point because someone brought up that it's running at 95 degrees, yeah. which is still well within the specifications of that part. It'll but still run fine. I mean, you're, you're going to get a nice warm right. room. Right. But, you know, but it's fine. Right. It's, it's also why I've disagreed with testing methodology with... Uh, a certain media outlet before um, about you know reporting the VRM temperature of every single graphics card that goes through their their space and saying well this card had a VRM temperature of 76 degrees but this one had one of 84 so you de should definitely buy the other one both of those temps are well within spec it's not an issue it's not a problem it's not even something the consumer should worry themselves about if it's if it's out of spec report on it because that's what a reporter should do. And well, that's what, and that's actually bringing the consumer useful information. Yeah, seventy six versus eighty four is just VRM differences. And well, usually, and the way it goes too is that the person testing it or has the issue says, "In my opinion, no, so it's, it's in spec, but in my opinion, they shouldn't have done this, and it should be better. And we should expect more. Uh, if I had the money and I was running it, I would have built it so it didn't do this. But it's in spec, and he's just trying to purposely cause." some issue or some drive hey, some I didn't kind of I didn't drop any names <laughs> it could be a woman you don't know I didn't do anything of the sort Jeff <laughs> shut up <laughs> does have similar hair <laughs> <laughs> but there's a difference between being a reviewer and and giving information and forming opinions based off whatever evidence you can come up with out of context. And and the VRMs are one of them. If they're within spec, then they're within spec. If they're causing problems, report on that. If they're not gonna deliver the power you need to overclock, even, even you know, you know the, the, the rated power delivery for this VRM configuration is 330 watt. Now you're overclocked, you know, 10, 900K, We'll, we'll only draw like 280, but if you're trying to do uh, LN2 overclocking, you might run into a problem here. There you go. That's a summed up review based on the VRM, based on the power delivery that is actually relatable to the consumer. But don't say this one delivers at 76, this one delivers at 84, and you shouldn't buy the 84 because it runs at 84 and it shouldn't. No, they're rated to run at 105 and 110 degrees Celsius. And now we have overbuilt VRMs and we're paying more for motherboards that we don't need to be because someone said it was a problem. How many rant counters is that? I mean, uh, Rhett's not on the show tonight, but... I know, I was going to say, like, if there was Rhett, we'd ding. We almost ding. do need a virtual, like, ding, yeah. ding, a counter. It's, should, like, it's like a drinking I should see game. if there's an OBS plugin that I could uh, put a counter in the middle of the uh, the main chat for. For for every rant, <laughs> rant you go through, everyone's got to take a sip. Bing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I should I should do a super chat voting. So if you uh you can uh drop a dollar and uh and add to the rant to the rant counter. <laughs> uh 
All right. I think I'm done bashing on the NVIDIA thing for now. And and again, I'm not saying that NVIDIA is free of, of any guilt in this situation. Far from it. Like I said, there are things that need to be done better from NVIDIA's end. Uh, AIBs need drivers in advance so they can actually test their cards out. Um, there, there needs to be a longer review window. Yes, I know. Someone's going to leak your benchmarks. Guess what? All the reputable ones won't be leaking benchmarks. And you know what? The ones who leaked it won't get a card next time. That's a problem that solves itself. Um, yeah, and reviewers stop need, need to get, stop getting their fee fees hurt. I kind of agree with that. You know, um, reviewing is not easy. Reviewing is not not for everyone. You need to be pretty thick skinned, especially in the social media reviewing age. Um, but yeah, it, it's not an easy thing. Anyway. I mean, uh, I've never gotten criticized for any of my beer reviews, Jeff. So I don't know what you're talking about. Right. Everyone's right. always like, you, John, you're pretty much 100% right all the time. Well, people need to watch them for you to get criticized. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, ouch. <laughs> Sorry, that was below the belt. I'll keep the gloves up. <laughs> so I was about to say, I am not Jason. <laughs> All right, how's your beer doing over there? Um, I'm. Uh, I I finished. I think uh, the just before you finished your last rant. Okay. Okay. So, so not too bad. Not too bad. Um, I'm kind of impressed with this one. Yeah, um, I, was, I was gonna ask you because uh, you were drinking a little slow, but I, I know you were going off it, so I, I understood why. Um, but yeah, so you're basically at the bottom of it. So, yeah. what do you think? It's probably nice and warmed up right about now. Definitely uh, warmed up. Um. The flavors there, they're a little bit lighter bodied than I want them to be, but but it's also a very dry beer, just like kind of they were aiming for. Yeah, so that um, English, yeah. Right, so it's it's that English style. I'm I'm kind of conflicted here. Like I, I'm really impressed with with this beer. Now, we we talked about very early on. Uh, Northwest style beers often will will hop it and they will over hop it. And all of a sudden, it's an English IPA, not yep. an English nut brown. Um, this is still an English nut brown. That's There's good. just a little bit of like a Chinook hop, I want to say, right in the very, very back, like long mm -hmm. after it's just the aftertaste. Like yeah. when I'm exhaling, I taste a little bit of hops. Okay, that's pretty good. Um, beyond that, it's it's a pretty delicious beer. Um, like I said, there's there's coffee. There's a real earthy nut kind of flavor to it um so those filberts are coming out pretty well yeah. um it's dry but it's not too dry um i wish it was just a little bit bolder but at the same time that also might ruin this beer so yeah, that's like the, i said oh, i'm a little conflicted with it oh and that's the problem too with with like a brown too like that because you're like i want this to be a bit more bold flavors but i then want a little like, more uh, to it uh, and, uh, but then you're like oh this is too sweet or this is like a, a stout but a light style that's sweet right. and it's conflicting it is a brown is a interesting it, it's a dry porter is what it is yeah it, it's just such yeah. an interesting beer personally never i think i've only had like two browns i've like this i could drink all the time or, or like you know be happy with um it, it is one of those like weird lost. You don't see it too often. Styles. Yeah. Um. Maybe more. Maybe East Coast, but definitely not here yeah. in, in the Northwest. But now you, you'll like this one. It's uh. It's pretty good and oh, yeah. pretty good color to it too. So. There was a small brewery in Eugene. I forget where it was. Um. It was it was tucked away in like the industrial area, and I bought. Oh, it was down there by the uh, electric station. Yeah, something yeah. on there. Um, I bought their, they had a 22 ounce, I, it was at a liquor store and it was 22 ounces and it was their nut brown ale, uh, their hazelnut brown ale. And it was like 250 for a 22 ounce. I was like, I just can't pass it up. Right? So I bought it and I was like, this is probably the best nut brown ale I've <laughs> ever had. And uh, I think they ended up like retweeting my tweet about it. And they were like, oh, so happy to have me. Or, or like, come, come to the brewery. A year later, they closed. Yeah. <laughs> you know. 
So my even my favorite brown ale is no longer in production. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm but no, that was that was pretty solid. I'm looking for a new one, so maybe this one will be it. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll hit you up with that one. So. Yeah. I got. I, I, I do like the uh, the picture on it. Yeah, no, when because you posted that a while ago, I was like, oh, that that hits any any type of those beers. I'll just buy it just for the label. I don't even care what style it is. And that's why it. I bought it. I saw the label and went, I have to have that. Yeah. <laughs> so and the fact that it's a decent beer, that's just a plus. Yep. All right. Uh, what are we opening next? What are you What are you gonna do? Because you you said you might be a little conflicted. Yeah, I. Um... I think I'll put this up to chat. Um, so uh, it's 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 lower than 82 degrees outside. So that's stout season, right? I'm going to go grab mine. Um, so uh, I have two choices for you, chat. Chat, are you listening? Uh, I have a wonderful stout that is one of my favorite stouts. Um, that is a standard of a local brewery. Uh, that comes out usually about this time. They, they only produce it about six months a year, and so it just just dropped for this year. Um, and uh, it's in my fridge. I think it's a 9.8%, so it's a pretty decent stout uh, as far as ABV. Um, or I'm actually thinking about going gin and tonic, so completely the opposite direction. But uh, uh, it's been a long time since I've had a good gin and tonic, so I picked up some Fever Tree Tonic, um, and I've got... Uh, uh, a couple different gins to choose from. So, gin and tonic or stout? Go. 82 Celica cocktail. Skull says stout. Uh, pickle beer. No. Uh, sip on gin and juice. That's two for cocktail, three for cocktail. Let's get a couple more. Let's let's say first one to six. Okay, yeah, gin and tonic. Okay, skull relented. Gin and tonic. Gin and tonic. Gin and tonic. There we go. We got six. All right. All right gin and tonic it is. All right. Uh, so I got uh, luminous 05. A great notion. So I'm gonna go with that one. A sour IPA, or as they call it, a tart IPA with passion fruit, dragon fruit, vanilla bean. As Jeff is doing that, you can witness the pour. Oh my gosh, it's pink. Look at that. Oh, God. What are you drinking? So this is um, uh, Luminous 05. It is Great Notions uh, Tart IPA with Passion fruit, dragon fruit, and vanilla bean. But look at that color. I know. Oh Holy my gosh. And crap. the aroma is super strong of passion fruit. Oh, it's super tropical. <laughs> oh, All right. That is that is wonderful. That's, that sounds really good. It is. Uh it's five point seven five, so it's really more a sour. Definitely is a sour. You don't taste any hops, but uh, typical great notion. Good yep. stuff. All right. So I picked myself up uh, some good old fever tree tonic water. Usually pretty good stuff. And for the gin, we're going with a Crater Lake gin, which is a uh, distilled from corn. So it's actually got a little bit of a, of a color to it. Color to this, it is, yeah. this is not a barrel aged gin, although I love me a barrel aged gin. Um, but, uh, yeah, this is handpicked juniper from Southern Oregon. So super, super good gin. And we're just going to kind of spitball the ratio here. There we go. Looks Lots of gin, to little tonic. That's always Lots, good. Yeah. <laughs> we're somewhere in the 1.1, 1, 1 to 1 to 1 to 1. 1.25. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's usually my tonic ratio. I usually do two to one. Yeah, I'm probably going two to one. I, I usually do two to one yeah. and double lime. That, yep. That's uh, my, I think someone on. on uh, my, li my limes are upstairs. Oh. I will be right back. I'm going to go yeah, get myself a you lime. You need lime. I need lime. You definitely need lime. All right, the show tonic. is yours, John. So. Oh, gosh, this is pressure. <laughs> All right. Uh, great notion. Yeah. All right. What does anyone, quick, quick. This is now Welcome to Hops and Brews. Um, what do we want to talk about? Let's, let's go. Let's talk. 
What do we got in chat? Hey, oh, also in chat, though, uh, anyone else have a second drink that they're on? Let us know in the chat. We'll probably give it a shout out when Jeff gets back. Um, let us know that. So, did you get those glasses in a bespoke post? No. Tacos. I do want some tacos. Like, when people talk about like essential oils, I think of the stuff that drips out of tacos. Those are my essential oils. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeff's always talking about my pouring head, Drake. Becky, this is a very pretty beer, and if you like sour, fruity beers, that's not like super sweet. This is definitely a tart, but you get more like really tart fruit. So, uh, Michael will, John is my favorite. You know what, Michael? You're my favorite. <laughs> hey, there's an ant crawling on my screen. I'm glad it's not touch screen. So, I, uh, I had some, uh, what is it? Coconut cream spill in my liquor cabinet right here and an ants just took over everything yep. even after i tried cleaning it up and i have an ant infestation um i thought i saw one even crawling into my keyboard <laughs> yeah no actually just behind uh my editing rig uh the ants started pouring into my office uh, a couple of weeks ago and uh they like they like electrical noise and uh and heat Yes. And my editing rig has it in spades, so I narrowly avoided an ant infestation and its power supply. <laughs> All right. <laughs> now, see, go. that's a video. How do you get rid of that? And <laughs> yep. there you are. Beauty. Look at that. A couple of small wedges and uh, and a wheel. Yep. I, I am a mm -hmm. lime freak when it comes to gin and tonics. Mm -hmm. I'm a lime freak anyway. But... Oh, yeah. No, I love a good uh, tropical drink. I usually want to taste the lime. Yep. A, a wedge is not good enough. I need like <laughs> two or three wedges. And like I said, a wheel would be nice to kind of almost like dip in and suck on or something yep. like that. Yep. Uh, it's been a long time since I've had a good gin and tonic. Which is funny. I have good gin, but uh, I was telling you earlier that I am out of tonic. And so everything I've been drinking <laughs> for cocktails has just been like whiskey based. Or yeah. bourbon base and it's or straight and it's like i got good enough gin to just drink straight too but it's like i i don't need to get like you know hammered i just right. want i just want a good nice relaxing drink at night and sometimes uh or like on a saturday hot day because it's been there's been some pretty decent days yeah uh recently um we are no longer you know infested with smoke or yeah. anything like Thank that it, there's you. actually been a couple clear days uh here I will never take breathing for granted again. <laughs> right. Uh, although oh I will my say God. The, there's some smoke coming up uh, a little bit still. Yeah. Uh, nothing, nothing comparative. Like, uh, yeah, there's a little hint in the sun and the moon. You see like, oh, the, the moon's yellow yeah. instead of white. Yeah. You know, it's a, no, nothing horrible to where beforehand you'd wake up and it was like, this is, uh, we're going to die. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're, we're living in some weird parallel universe or something. It was bizarre. It was bizarre. It was like living in bizarro world. And it was, what, nine, ten days? It was like that? I think it was like ten days, yeah. Yeah. I think it was, it was I mean, it literally felt like driving from work, going into like uh, a, a trip to Mordor or, or going into a dragon's mouth because you were just driving into smoke. And then it would clear out and then you had to turn around and you see this red glow and you just have to keep driving closer to it. Yeah. And it was like so weird for me to do that. Yeah. I've, I've driven through forest fire areas before. Um, not so much where it's like burning on the road, but within like the mile or so. Um, and the entire area was like that. I mean, it was hundred miles stretch was literally like you're driving through a forest fire. Yeah. It's, it's intense, but luckily we have, <laughs> we've had a couple really, really good days. Um, yep. The rain really helped uh, clear everything out. Oh, my gosh. The day after it rained, how weird was it to go outside and be like, there's a sky. There, there's a blue. Yeah. It was it was so weird. It's like nothing. Like, it never even happened. Yeah. It was so weird. Um, but 
there has been some really good days and I've been wanting a nice refreshing drink like because I've been able to do like yard work or something. Yeah. I, I sat down at a lawn chair for two hours today and just did some work on my laptop. Yeah. Just because I could. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's where like a nice gin and tonic or something like that, something even lighter because you can make a nice light version of that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got a nice soda flavor was work. And so I'm just like, I want some good tonic. <laughs> Uh, do we get rain up here? Send that down to California. Yeah, we finally got some rain up here, and oh God, did it rain that day? Oh my um, gosh, did it rain? I mean, uh, I think I posted on the Discord. We had lightning, thunderstorms. Like it was literally a strobe light in the sky. Yeah, um, we got something like three inches of rain in just just over three hours. Um, so torrential yeah, rain, it was an rain inch, like an I've hour, never seen before. An hour or uh, an inch an hour, basically. Right. Um, and of course the French drain at the bottom of my driveway on a negative grade driveway leading to my garage decided to clog that night <laughs> and proceeded to flood half of my garage. <laughs> so, so I take that back, John. I have had things flood recently. There you go. Um, yeah, luckily, uh, um, it didn't reach the server rack. We we lost some cardboard boxes and a, a couple of things. Nothing nothing major though. But yeah, I had to wait out in like mid shin water, uh, and reach down with my my bare hands and unclog our drain and get all that water moving. That was it was intense. That was like two in the morning. I want to say oh, I did that. Gosh. And the I only had... reason I had I had gotten up was uh, it was raining and lightning so hard it woke me up. And I'm like, I better just walk around the house, just make sure everything's fine. And so walked through the upstairs, you know, just kind of looked at windows and, you know, no trees falling down on my house or crap like that. And uh, walked downstairs and I hear drip, 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 drip. And I went, okay, there's water somewhere, but it's a basement and, and we have sump pumps. And so it's not, I'll say it's not overly unusual to hear water in our basement, um, but it's still a concern. You want to find out if where it's at, is it yeah. coming into the house? That kind of thing. Um, but it's coming from my daughter's room. And so I, I opened my daughter's bedroom door and I can hear a waterfall in her room. And it was pouring in from the top window seal. It had just busted. The whole, whole window seal had busted. And uh, uh, what had happened was our gutter had uh, couldn't keep up with the rainfall. And so it was draining over the gutter. And as it was coming over the, the top of the gutter, it was landing perfectly on the top of her windowsill. Uh. And so all of the water from the gutter was landing on her window. <laughs> um, and it was just flooding into her room. So her entire mattress was soaked. Uh. And, uh, How did yes. she not wake up? She's a really hard sleeper. So, <laughs> so I, 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 I kind of shook her real quick and uh, what? And I said, you need to get up right now. <laughs> I'm sorry, but you need to get up. And uh, got her upstairs, got her all dried off, got her, you know, sleep on the couch. But then I get to go outside in that storm, uh, find out why it's leaking into into her room, and uh, and whatnot. And I'm like, okay, well, I have a tarp and a staple gun and a couple things. I can patch this up until morning, and we'll be fine. So I walk into my garage as I'm walking around to the front of the garage over to my tool bench. I step in ankle deep water, and I went, oh shit. <laughs> it's not 10 o'clock yet my night just got longer <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all yeah. right i'm having a whiskey after this yeah essentially <laughs> so yeah i was just up the rest of the night had a nice cocktail when it was all done yep You're, uh, you were probably sitting there saying i am so glad i work for myself now mm -hmm. <laughs> i'm so glad i get to sleep in that a little extra bit instead of having to go to work yep <laughs> Well, and then this last week, my insomnia has been working overtime for me. Um, so I've I've had, uh, uh, we'll just call it clinically diagnosed insomnia since I was like six years old. Um, and uh, it's a problem. It, it's annoying. It's uh, just something I deal with. But uh, usually I keep it under control most of the time, but especially especially during season changes where it's like, it's sunny, raining, fog, uh, you know, we're just oh, all like all God, over the map. Yeah. It messes with my head. It triggers migraines and, and it also triggers my insomnia really, really bad. Uh, pressure change, especially. Um, but uh, every single morning for almost a solid week now, I've been waking up at like two in the morning, whether I went to bed at eight or whether I went to bed at like midnight and I will go to bed at midnight and then I'll wake up at two. And it's just like, I'm awake now. Okay. Yep. 
guess I'll just sit here and watch some TV. <laughs> Play my 3DS. Hope I fall asleep. Nope, I'm not falling asleep. Let's put that away. Turn all the lights off again. Sleeping pills. Blah, blah, blah. Doesn't matter. I'm awake. So, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I'm hoping to get some sleep tonight. <laughs> but I, uh, I'm i I'm running on about three hours from last night. And I think about four hours from the night before that. And oh, yeah. Two yeah. hours the night before that. So. I, I shot a video last night. So, I was up late and then my son woke me up at 3 a.m and uh had to go pee so i took him i even though he he can like do it himself but he's like oh, okay you have to you know kind of open the door for him yeah and, and he goes in there but then we have a little night light in there but then that wakes him up and then he starts telling you jokes <laughs> and then that then then you know he's like oh dang it he's awake he's telling jokes now yeah and then i take him back into his bed he's like well can can you like lay with me he'll ask like can, can you lay with me for a little bit okay I'll, I'll be there for five minutes okay i'll lay with you sure so then i'm on a hard floor and you know laying on the floor because he, he has a single mattress yeah so it's you know not a big enough for me and and uh five minutes i i, I get up and I, I go to the door he's like hey where are you going I, I'm still awake. No, you need to stay. It's like, no, it's been five minutes. No, no, no. Five more minutes. Yeah. Okay. And then, you know, that goes on for like an hour. I uh, can tell it's your first kid because you're still negotiating with a two-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's a, this is a four-year-old now. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, I, I know. I forgot time's he's on the a, other side of my kid. Time's yeah. a flying, yeah. No. Jeez. Um, uh, no, for some reason, I was thinking he was a year younger than my youngest, but no, he's a year older. That's right. Yeah, I remember now. So it's coming back. So <laughs> I love it though, like because you know, finally I get into. Well, what it is, it's like I'll go to bed and then he'll come in the room. Oh, this makes me laugh almost every single time, and it's really bad because I'll laugh out loud if my son does something funny or if I find it just even if it's like it's it, it hurts me, it's painful because I got to wake up. I'll still laugh because it's so ironic. But he'll literally like run into our room. It's three or four in the morning, slam the door like wide open and almost do like a, a Kramer slide. It almost feels like it. And, yeah. And, we're like, and they're like, I'm back. And I was like, what? It's like, yes. Now I'm up and I'm back. <laughs> what? <laughs> Not I'm up. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back, baby. That's, that's exactly what it sounds like. I feel all I think about. It's like, oh my god. <laughs> he has no. I, was like, I keep asking my, where did he get this? She has no clue. Uh, yeah. I asked his his, his grandparents. I, was like, I don't know. Yeah. And, and so that's what he does. And it's like I laugh so hard. It's like I can't be mad at him now because I'm laughing too hard. Yep. And it's like every other night um that's great so funny. um my youngest uh the other day uh my wife had gone outside and she was uh doing some gardening and uh i was downstairs in my office editing a video and she walks in and she goes i can't find mama i said well yeah i think she's outside she goes oh well i thought she went shopping I said no she didn't go shopping she's outside she goes oh well i looked in the bedroom and i looked in the kitchen and I looked downstairs and I looked in your room and I can't find her anywhere. <laughs> yes. She's listing yeah. all the places that she looked. <laughs> I know. It's hilarious. It was absolutely adorable. I know. It's it's like, ugh, you, you, you can't be mad. You just cannot no. be mad. And even if you are mad or are annoying, it's just like there are, I'll, he'll start doing this annoying things and then he'll just do this one quirk and it like, that was, that was so cute or, or mm -hmm. my gosh, that was so funny. All right. All right. That's, that's good. That's all right. Uh, that yep. brought me back down from being frustrated, probably not even at him at something else, but he's just yep. annoying me or, 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 or like, you know, uh, I'm annoyed at the, another subject and he's trying to interfere, but he just wants my attention. And so, um, sorry, I'm watching Rambo get into a box. Obviously I have a lot of those around. Um, but I have a case box in there, uh, just a, a PC case box, um, with my NZXT Kraken X73 box, like sticking halfway out of the top and he's trying to fit into the Kraken box. So he's trying to fit into the smaller of the two, two boxes, box within a box. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. He finally gave up. Now he's coming over here. 
Rambo, do you want to say hi to your fans? You want to say hi to your fans? No? You're just going to lay by the door? You're going to be a jerk again? Okay. He's going to be a jerk. <laughs> so, yeah. Show the cat! I'm trying! <laughs> hey, at least, at least you can pick up your your pet and show them on camera. I'll be like, I have to get on the floor. And then when I do, if I did show it on camera, they'd be like, poop all around the rabbit or hay. And it's like, ugh. <laughs> Although if I can get them to drink beer, if I can find a rabbit safe beer. Uh, my oldest daughter, Miss, uh, asked actually earlier today, um, so do people know who Rambo is on your channel? I said, yeah. And actually they started complaining when he's not in my videos now. <laughs> Where's the cat? He can't be in every video. He's a cat. He's also a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> See, what you need to do now for like a Halloween video or during October, get him like a bandana and a bow and arrow and really make him Rambo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or just, like the head, in, just the in, headband and the band, bandolier. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or instead of that, all other Sylvester Stallone movies and not Rambo. Yeah. <laughs> 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 do a little Rocky. Do yeah, do a little Rocky. And do uh, what is it? Um, Cobra, uh, over the top. <laughs> like get him with the backwards hat, arm wrestling. Mix it in with some some uh, Jean Claude. Have him have him straddle between two cardboard boxes. There, yeah. <laughs> See, that's what you need to start doing in all your thumbnails is like super imposing Rambo, but in weird uh, positions. Yeah, weird you know? action movie positions. Yeah, exactly. That's what you need to do. <laughs> no. need more ruby and zeke in videos um my problem with ruby and zeke um is they are so so hyper ruby's finally starting to calm down at age four um but i have i have two dogs i have i have ruby who's an australian shepherd uh we believe a boxer mix um it's some kind of uh um Gosh, that breed of dogs. Pit, boxer, blah, 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 blah. terrier. Some kind of terrier mix. Um, but, uh, cause she's, she's thick up front. Um, but, uh, sh she and Zeke never ever stop moving. So I don't have any clear pictures of either of my dogs. I have tried to take their pictures with SLRs like thousand frames a second, like, okay, I can get this one in foot. They are either not in focus because they move too quick for my USM Canon lens to catch. Uh, or they, uh, they move so fast that my shutter wasn't able to catch them in time. And so the pictures all look like, <laughs> yeah, doesn't well, matter. I mean, it, Any it, camera it, that I've tried to take their pictures with, they, yeah. Yeah. If you go and watch older talking heads, you'll see that they show up in them and they just will not stop moving. They are hyper dogs. Yeah. 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 Ah, 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 ah. Dude, play with me, lick me, pet me, whatever. You know, that's, that's, it's everything. And even then you'll see me just, it's just constantly like this. You know, one of us is always doing this while we're right. talking. Um, you know. So Z Zeke has finally decided he wants to be a lap dog. And so his latest thing is he wants to jump up and sit in my lap. Um, but the thing is with Zeke, is if he, if he is anywhere near you, he needs to be licking you. Yeah. Um, and so it's this constant just all over. <laughs> See what you need. Any to do body part that he gets eye contact with, he is going to put his tongue on. See, you can go put like pepper in your beard, and then when he licks you, he'll like, ah, and then he'll learn to not lick that anymore. Yeah. Um. <laughs> but yeah. Uh. And Zeke is so funny too, because uh, looking at him gives him anxiety. Uh, <laughs> but by that, I mean, um, he will be like laying in the middle of the floor because he wants to be in the same room as you. But if you close a door, he's actually anxious that he won't be able to get out. And so we can't close doors behind him. He has to have an, an egress. Otherwise within 30 seconds, he's, <laughs> he, he can't deal with it. Um, and, uh, but, if he's laying in the room next to you and you don't look at him, he's happy to lay there. As soon as you make eye contact, he's up and his tail is going and and he like, needs to be on pet you. Pet me, pet me, like pet here. me. Yeah, yeah, I know. It is, yeah. 
And I love my dogs. They're great dogs, but they're not, and they're photogenic if they would ever stop moving. <laughs> Okay. Um, should we get back into it? Let's get back into it. I think that was yeah. enough of a of a break. A break. Yeah. <laughs> it's almost thirty minutes of us just rambling about dogs I and know. kids. Well, the rest of the stuff isn't really a lot of um, talking yeah. content. I mean, this next one's got some, depending upon yeah. where you stand. Yep. This one, um, kind of a crap move by YouTube. Yeah. Uh, much. Uh, much chagrined by a lot of the hard of hearing community. Um, so YouTube for years has had a feature called uh, community captions. Um, it's a feature that allows people to submit closed captioning content to YouTube videos, um, independent of the YouTube creator themselves. And it, so you can turn on community captions. You can have uh, authorized people to upload captions to your videos and, uh, make your videos multilingual, uh, or just add closed captioning to your standard videos. And it's it's a terrific feature. Yeah, um, it, it, better than probably the auto feature that YouTube has. Right. Uh, I mean, welcome back to, to Hammer on Box. Yeah, I know. Like, oh my, I mean, you could do a whole- I have a shirt based on a meme based on YouTube automatic captioning. I know, I was just like, you could do a whole <laughs> YouTube channel of just reading uh, people's YouTube can't captions ian cutress's youtube channel tech tech potato is based off youtube bad captioning bad yeah. automatic captioning that's the source of his youtube channel <laughs> name to tell you how much of a meme it all is it's as good as it is it's also horrible yeah um and uh especially when you're talking like specifics if you're just out there vlogging hey this is jeff and i'm out here drinking beer at some tap house blah 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 blah, blah. it's probably going to get all that just fine if I'm saying the all new Intel 10900K overclocks to 5.2 gigahertz with a 1.42 volt overclock, blah, 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 it ain't gonna catch a nope. damn thing I said. <laughs> no, they'll probably say like spatula, potato, overclock. No, spatula is reserved for NVIDIA cards. Uh. <laughs> um, it's like bad lip reading. It's exactly what it is. In fact, I'm pretty sure they're just reading your lips. They're not actually listening to the audio. So yeah, was familiar uh, with the uh, the the seagull Yoda song. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> one of my personal favorites. <laughs> that is a, I mean, I will probably watch that probably once a year. If At least more. once a year. And if it comes up in my feed, it's getting a click. It's getting a click. Yeah. It's like, hey, have you seen this? Yes, I have. Yes. Click. I'll watch it one more time though. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I didn't care. They did like a a, a follow up one. It wasn't as good mm -hmm. uh, with the Yoda, but yeah, the seagulls. Above my head. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Anyway, YouTube is doing away with the community captions feature on their videos. Um, and even 500,000 signatures on a petition page are not preventing them from shutting down the feature. The irony of all this is YouTube is killing the feature during Deaf Awareness Week. <laughs> I know. Oh my gosh. It's like. <sighs> and the irony is not lost on any of us. No. No, no, no. Um, yeah. Uh, now, technically, technically, they're stating that they will pay, I think, for the next six months for uh, a third party feature to automatically do it if you have like three videos where people have been submitting. Uh, 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 captions uh, for at least three videos. Yeah. Um, so versus still... before, it was already free. Yeah, I know. And it wasn't a service that I had to rely on you for. Yeah. And it was just something we could do. And everyone liked it. And it worked. And it worked uh, well. Yeah. And no, but no, now, for some reason, it's not going to work anymore because Google decided. Yeah, uh, ABC decided, or whatever they're called now. It's uh, Google. Is it or, Google? Alphabet. Alphabet, Alphabet. Yeah. That's Alphabet. Well, Alphabet is the parent company to Google. Okay. Uh, uh, now, one of the excuses they cited was that there are too many spammers on there or false information. It's like, no, the, the YouTuber gets to review these before he submits it. Right, right. 
now the I can... YouTube, the the channel themselves, the creator themselves yeah. gets to approve what captions get added. Yeah, so you can sit there and submit all you want. Doesn't mean anyone's going to be able to see it. Mm -hmm. um, actually, it was so funny because uh, I actually had someone ask if they could do this for one of my videos. It was mm -hmm. so weird. Uh, it was actually the video you were on that we did the um, Firestone Old Fashioned, not Old Fashioned, uh, Manhattan. Mm -hmm. And it was... Old like, Manhattan. Yep. Yeah. It was uh, a European, and they asked if they could uh, submit their own subs to it because they wanted to show it because they were at their bar because they, they were going to have it on draft. Nice. And so they wanted to have the video playing in the background, but they needed subs. And I said, yeah, sure, go ahead. And, uh, you know, I had to go and approve it. So I was like, I don't see a problem then with any of this. I mean, are, are people just getting spammed with, you know... Um, I've never seen it, and nor have I heard anyone in my circle talk about it. Yeah. Uh, so about, about it being an issue. In fact, most of them use the feature and use it to great effect yeah i mean um, no no one's making fun of this half the time it is just for you know someone wants to have it on subs sometimes people can even have it on silent and be like i want good subs all right this on subs i can just now listen to this and, and and watch it and i don't have to you know i don't i can't play audio at work but i can watch this right or something like that yeah or, um or like you said the hearing impaired <laughs> right kind of basically like this yeah, so, so I don't think anything is going to get Google to change their minds, unfortunately. Very few things get Google to change their minds. Um, in fact, uh, I still don't have a check mark by my name. Even though at 100,000 subscribers, you're eligible to get a check mark be beside your name. But Google decided to remove that feature two weeks before I hit 100,000 subs, and then they reinstated it. But for some reason, I'm still not eligible because I happened to cross 100,000 subs during that. So for some reason, I don't have that benchmark to my name. Even though I got a plaque, I, d I don't get a check mark. You got to go. So, I think you have to like resubmit something. I did repeatedly. Oh, really? I've called them out on Twitter. I've gone, hey, hey, Team YouTube, what the f is going on? <laughs> Give me my damn check mark. Yeah. I got one. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> Yeah, oh, well, I mean, there. I'm, I'm pretty sure everyone at YouTube is a little um, slow. Purposely to respond, they're like, eh, it's not that big of a deal. Who mm -hmm. cares? You know, it, it's probably like... More likely it's, oh, this guy again. Yeah, it, it, it's probably like, all right, give, give him to the new guy. And the new guy's like, I'm just now reading the manual. I don't know what this is going on. Yeah. Uh, 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 delete. <laughs> Actually, you know, it's so funny, even uh, yesterday and today, a lot of my YouTube subscriptions uh, all got erased. I had like a bunch of YouTube channels that I subscribed to and didn't get any notifications because of like, oh, I watch all these channels. I know I know when videos come in daily or weekly and I haven't been getting them. And somehow with the past like week or two, YouTube unsubscribed me to like 10 channels. It happens. And it's like, uh, what? Does this happen to me? They say it doesn't. But I know. It happens. I'm sure that's pretty much what I'm going to blame on my do you, channel. Do you know? Do you know why I don't ask people to ring that bell? <laughs> ring the bell so you get notifications because notifications don't work. They mean nothing. They mean nothing. You have to still say it, Jeff. To nope. be a true to YouTuber, you have to say click like and subscribe, and remember to hit that bell for that ring. I. I ain't saying crap for that. I will say like the video because that helps. And I'll say subscribe because that helps. That bell, don't do crap. See, what you need to do is say share the video. That's what really helps. Yeah. So you guys yeah, hit like and subscribe and make sure to share this video if you like it. That's Someone put this on Reddit so I can be exposed to future ridicule. <laughs> I know. And I'm sitting there, sitting there, share Jeff's page, share Jeff's page. Yeah. <laughs> Who's putting it on? Like I'm creating all these Reddit accounts. Yeah, <laughs> craft computing rant number nine doesn't count because you didn't super chat it. Uh, <laughs> look at me milking my patrons for more. <laughs> um, but no, I have the bell clicked on exactly two YouTube channels: How to Drink and Cocktail Chemistry. 
Guess how many notifications I, I receive? Zero. I have never received one single notification that either of those channels has uploaded oh. a new video. Oh no, you, you never. Have the, Not once. The bell is new now. There are three. Once you click it, then there are three options. Yeah. So now you have to sit. You can click the bell, and then you have to go and click all videos. Otherwise, it's like you click the bell, but then it says like subscription, and then none. And it's like why I click the bell? I want all. So. <laughs> Novella Hub. Jeff can sing. Ring my bell. <laughs> not for five dollars. I'm not. <laughs> yes, sing another video so Jason can make fun of it. <laughs> yeah, kind of backfired on him though. That I know good. most things do. Yep. <laughs> Can't say that joke. It's a family friendly show. All right. <laughs> There were like on, three that jumped into my head and went, no, no, definitely I, no. I okay. set you up. It's, I know you did. It's, I think we are, we are close. Though. 943. I know we are. And close. it's, it's all available on the podcast, John. So we, we got to <laughs> keep some decorum. Okay. Yeah. After show, we after can let it fly. Show, make sure to subscribe and join Jeff's Patreon in the after show. That's where the real fun begins. And also, if you like a bunch of other channels, there is a <laughs> Six specific others. talking heads. <laughs> there is a, a drink food area there's movie entertainment there's music there is pure humor and comedy there is a buy and sell if you are frustrated with ebay craigslist facebook market we have our own buy sell we have a trade. buy sell trade trade page that's right uh we even have our own academy where we teach you how to do stuff well we don't but someone else does yeah <laughs> Some Norwegian guy who's really good at cocking windows will teach you how to do stuff. That's right. Yeah, we, we have a full how-to section now. Yeah. Uh, both for, uh, we have a couple of patrons on the page who will do tutorials for soldering and for general construction. And the latest one has been for laying caulk. <laughs> so, there yeah, you go. Yeah. Yes. So, and that actually... You know, it is a skill in somewhat, somewhat a bit to do it properly, especially like around a window, window seals. If you're looking for weatherproofing, there is a little bit of technique. Someone asked if my wine came in yet. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. I saw that in your last video. Yes. Yes. Yes, my wine came in. Uh, let me grab the bottles, in fact. So I got two out of three here. The third one's upstairs. Um, but uh, so I said, if you guys donated enough money on the Super Chat to buy the wine, I would buy the wine. So I got the Star Trek uh, wine bottles. And so, yes, they're here. <laughs> uh, so I got the Klingon blood wine, uh, which is the bottle that I really wanted. And John's got one too. Um, John, don't you bring out the Chateau Picard because you know I don't have that one yet. It's on order, though. He's going to go get the Chateau Picard. I know he is. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, this is a Cabernet Sauvignon uh, 2018 from California. Uh, but the bottle is just badass. I think we can all agree on that. Um, then there's the Special Reserve uh, Sauvignon Blanc uh, right there. The United Fe Federation of Planets Official Edition of the Sauvignon Blanc. Um, and this is a... Uh, it's number 4281. There we go. Technically, it's... Uh, I don't think it has an age statement on it. It doesn't have a year on it. Huh. Oh, well. Oh, 2019. It's right there. 2019, California. Uh, $10, Novella Hub. Bang my gong. Uh, dinner and a movie first? Yeah. So um, you have the... Uh... You got the uh, dark one then, right, too? The dark red? Yes, I got the dark red. Yeah. The yep. uh, uh, special reserve. The vine, yeah. yeah, Zinfandel. Yeah. Old vine Zinfandel. Did you get the 2018 or 2019? Uh, I think that one's the 18. Okay. Um, I got the I got the, the 19 Sauvignon Blanc, the, the white. Oh, yeah. So I got that one, too. Are you going to open yours? Um, I plan on it. Not tonight. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> Does it say 2019? By the way, 
I've had these shelves up here for like five years. This is the first time I've put wine bottles on them, and that's what they're designed for. That is. <laughs> <laughs> I put I the Klingon I... bottle on there, and I went, that's the first time I've put a wine bottle on these. <laughs> <laughs> Glory to you and your house. <laughs> Thank you, Skull. <laughs> yeah, I think that was the first thing I noticed in your, your video. I was like, ah, I know what that is! Ah! <laughs> that um, uh, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio meme where he's got the beard. Oh! <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah. Uh, the D, $10. Uh, how is Romulan Ale not a thing yet? Uh, it is. Actually, it is a thing. You can get Romulan Ale. Yeah, um, you can, there's a beer that is actually licensed uh, by Star Trek. Licensed Romulan, Romulan Ale, and it is blue. Yes. Uh, I hear it's not very good. Um, but yeah, it, is, it um, is a real thing. So a number of years ago, my wife and I took a trip up to Seattle and spent a couple of days up there, um, I believe for one of our anniversaries. And uh, we were looking for things to do in the city that were not like the touristy things. Like you can go to Pike's Market, you can go to the Space Needle, you can do things like that. What are other things you can do in the city? And uh, we found a movie theater that throughout the entire week, they will just replay old movies. And uh, a lot of them end up being sci-fi movies and, and things like that. The weekend we were there, they played um, Galaxy Quest. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, like, 2012, I got to rewatch Galaxy Quest in theaters, and that was amazing. <laughs> um, but... They also have a full bar, and they do custom cocktails based on the based on the movie that they're showing that night because it's just a one screen theater, um, and so they actually had a Romulan ale cocktail there. So I had a Romulan ale cocktail while watching Galaxy Quest on the big screen sometime. <laughs> I'm, well, sometime within the last eight eight to ten years. I'm assuming it was probably like blue curacao and it's blue curacao and vodka mostly. Yeah, <laughs> but, <laughs> they probably put like a tiki in there or something like that. What is this? It is blue. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for those who got that reference. Um, and and the reference in the next generation that followed that. Um, but, uh, it is, it is. Rev, $30. Oh, wait, this is the stream before my 30th birthday. Cheers, lads. Cheers. Cheers, Rev. And happy birthday, good sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, yeah, and Skull says, you got to look up on the back shelves for cues to anything coming up in future videos. Yes, I will often put teasers up on my behind me for upcoming videos, like the Core i9-10850K that's sitting right there. Maybe that's going to be a video. I don't know. I've got the that one, too. That's a future video. Uh, that one's not. That's just my collector's gold and silver phaser. Uh, this is a future video, this little pink box right here. Those are all future videos. <laughs> yeah, points if you can guess in the comments below what they are. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, it was green, but sure, yeah, I know. But you got the reference, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's... It's green. It is green. Huh. Oh, yeah. what is it? Uh, it was some kind of brandy. When someone asked, yeah, when, uh, oh gosh. I had, I had the name of it and then I it know. went away. Nor. No. Uh. Something brandy, yeah. Um, but, uh, I like, uh, for a while there was, what would Scotty do? Well, remember, drinking an alien under the table is not off the table. Is not is one of the options. Alberian whiskey. Alberian whiskey. Thank you. Yes. Al Aldarian or Alberian? Al Aldarian. Oh, sorry, Al Aldarian. 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 Aha. Uh -huh. Yes. I said Alberian. Yep. That would be a fun thing to get too. Like, at, because they've done the Ten Ford uh, vodka, which I have, and you had the Kirk. The Kirk uh, whiskey, the James T. Kirk whiskey. Yeah, wasn't it like 12 years? Yeah, it was a 12-year bourbon yeah. uh, made in Iowa. Yeah, that was good. I, I would like to see, now this would be really funny, the uh, 
Aldarian whiskey could be like something similar to like the Paps where it's really harsh and they just dye it green. Yeah. That would be kind of fun. That would uh, be kind of fun. But you got to like, make it barrel proof. Uh, <laughs> and that that uh, square bottle. Yeah. You got to get that that weird bottle. That weird bottle. Oh, God. I would, I would, I'd probably pay 40 bucks for that. 45, 50 bucks. I, I would say like, you, you could also go like Midori or something like that. Get a, a melon liqueur. <laughs> oh, yeah. Or like, yeah, do like whiskey and, and melon liqueur and just yeah 50 50 ratio like 35 percent or something like that yep there you go all right we got a couple quick stories to get here before yep. time runs out uh first off amd ryzen 7 5800x eight core zen 3 cpu apparently cited on uh ashes of the singularity benchmark website uh two weeks before the announcement because remember october 8th there is an announcement actually that's next week crap uh <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so not before the next Talking Heads, but literally like the Thursday after the next Talking Heads, isn't it? Yeah. The so eighth, yeah, it's Thursday. It won't be talked yep. about. Yep. So we'll probably have more leaks before then, though. Um, but yeah, apparently the 5800X has been seen on the Ashes of the Singularity webpage, uh, paired up with an RTX 2080, and the results are, well, pretty decent, but... There's not a whole lot of specs on it either, yeah. though. Yeah. It's eight core, 16 threads. We know that much. Yeah, that, that's pretty much all we know. We have no idea about graphics. We have no idea about power consumption. We have no idea about a lot of stuff on it because there wasn't anything posted. Yep. So, yeah, that's basically all we know. Yep. Uh, um, Spotify has, well, I uh, got gotten into Shopify. A Shopify. Oh, Shopify. Oh, Shopify. It is oh i thought it was spotify no shopify Sh I don't know. um shopify? so this was an interesting story that dropped uh late last week i want to say uh shopify uh for those who don't know is a retail savings site you can go to oh. shopify and you can shop a whole bunch of different retailers amazon best buy new egg etc um and find the best price oh one of those um, okay well apparently um they had to disclose a breach in customer information. But it was not a problem with their system. It was actually a couple of rogue support agents who were selling that information off to third parties. Uh, so something around 200 different retailers that they service, um, they were sniffing info from and, and exfiltrating that data. Um, so recently Shopify became aware of an incident involving the data of less than 200 merchants. So 200 merchants being people who can sell on the Shopify website. Uh, we immediately launched an investigation to identify the issue and impact so we could take action and notify the affected merchants. Our investigation determined that two rogue members of our support team were engaged in a scheme to obtain customer transactional records of, of certain merchants. We immediately terminated these individuals access to our Shopify network and referred the incident to law enforcement. We are currently working with the FBI and other international agencies in their investigation of these criminal acts, end quote. Um, so basically they said, there is no problem with our system. We were not hacked. Yeah. Inside Layman's job. terms, we were not hacked. This was an inside job. Um, broader terms, they were hacked, but there's nothing we need to worry about outside of the information that was gathered. Um, but it's kind of rare that um, a company will fess up to rogue internal agents. Uh, and the fact that they did so without being probed for it, kudos to Shopify. And, yeah. and, like, and like I said, I will always judge a company not that the fact that they had a breach, but how do they handle said breach? And what is the what is their remediation steps? And this was well done. This yeah, is, they're... we found the issue, we terminated the employees, we are cooperating with law enforcement. Uh, we have already notified all 200 merchants of all breaches that are that we, we know to have occurred. We are taking steps to make sure this doesn't happen again. And uh, what else do you need to know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, really, it, it, I mean, again, dude, a lot of hacks too. People sit there and think they're in the mainframe and everything. No, a lot of these data breaches are usually inside jobs or not even like someone hacked in. They are just like, oh, some third party forgot to wipe a server that we rented out. Target let an HVAC company in and they and they stole all their credit card data across yeah. the nation. Oops. It wasn't a <laughs> right. hack, right. you know, but yeah, it, it usually is. They allowed someone access to their system that they shouldn't have. Right. Um, but again, too, like you were saying, this is a really good fess up because they did this within like two weeks of finding out 
um, something like that. And um, so really kudos for them. And then they even said like, you know, we'll update you on more when we get the information. So we might even hear a little more from right. this. So they terminated the individuals. It sounds like they killed them. <laughs> Um, I can neither confirm or deny those reports. All I have is the fact that they terminated said individuals. <laughs> My condolences to their families. Um, but yeah, like I said, kudos to Shopify for the way they, they handled this. And everyone gets attacked. Everyone gets breached at some point. How you handle it and what remediation steps you take is how I judge you as a company. Um, and if the same breach happens again, then you get some more scrupulous eyes. But yeah. Yeah, overall, well done, Shopify. Yep. Uh, Yinglings. Yep. We got uh, some, they have we a got, Hershey's Porter. Yeah, so we talked about this about a year ago that mm -hmm. Younglings uh, partnered up with Hershey's to release kind of a, a well, Younglings is known to be, again, we talked about this, I think, two weeks ago or whenever, uh, about them distributing. They are the largest technically craft brewery in America and the oldest still um and they partnered with molson course who distribute it nationwide now well last year they partnered with hershey's to release a porter which usually younglings only has one beer which is their lager and so this was pretty interesting now they last year they only had it on draft and they only had it uh, available in 13 states and so many people complained yep. and so well youngling said we heard you and guess what we bottled it and it's now in 24 states. Yep, it, so, it's in our entire distribution network. If you get Yinglings, you can have this beer. Yep, pretty much. So this will yinglings, not be part of them. Yinglings, 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 I've, Yinglings. I've been, I've been corrected on that pronunciation like a dozen times, yeah. but I've been corrected a dozen different ways. You know, I'll say Yinglings, and then I'll say, no, it's Yinglings, and I say Yinglings, someone else says Yinglings. Someone uh, says Yinglings. Yinglings, I've heard that one too. Yep. I, I personally go off of the Star Wars younglings just because yeah. I like the meme. Um, just because Anakin was seen slaughtering younglings. Yeah, exactly. So it's fantastic. So if you're looking for a Hershey's beer, which I don't think Hershey's actually really partners up with too many breweries. I don't remember no. seeing a lot of things. So this would be an interesting, um, and I hear it's actually not a bad porter. Now, a porter yeah. is, I believe it's still going to be a lighter beer. It's like 4.5%. But... Yeah. Still interesting. So if you are pretty much on the East Coast, that's where Jung, Younglings, Younglings is distributed right now. This is not part of the Molson Coors distribution. That doesn't take effect till later next year. Yep. So, but you can get your hands on this. So if you are a beer reviewer or a beer savvy person wanting to get some of these rare beers, you might be able to find this one now. And then there is... Uh, we did have a super chat that was directed at you. Ryan wants to know for $5, John, any beers from Ohio you'd like to get your hands on? All of them. All of them. I, I just like beer. John, be careful <laughs> with that all of them. <laughs> because remember, I have pickle beers in my fridge just for you. <laughs> I will try it. I don't want... He like will try six, anything. I don't want a sixer. <laughs> I, I just want one. Hey, Jeff, I have a pickle beer for you, too. No, you don't. Yes, I do. John, <laughs> I have lines. <laughs> Unlike you, I have lines that I draw. I will make you try it. <laughs> there are some things I know I'm not going to like. It's spicy pickle. That doesn't change my opinion. <laughs> Come on, I bought it just for you. I'm sure you did. Uh, Steve will rather enjoy that one. Then. Steve already had it, so <laughs> well, then he can have another. Yeah. Um, but yes. Uh, yeah. I, I'll enjoy any beer. I love. I love trying beer, whether it's good or bad. I will try it. I love the experience. I usually prefer it to be good. You, yes, you usually do. Um, I will take a sip of anything. You'll force your way through a pint. I will. I will. I know. You never know. You never know. You can experience. I know. And so, John, but, you know. I know. <laughs> yeah, well, like you said, you'll try something, and something you did try was Pap's uh, hard coffee that they came out with. And I did like that. You did like that. Well, you might like this. Pap's Blue Ribbon is coming out with another 
hard coffee yep. and it's going to be the cold brew coffee now this is actually supposed to be a less sweet more coffee based they're taking the sugar and the lactose out of it so no creamy no non-dairy yep. uh a 0.5 percent eight less abv so 4.5 not a five percent yep. uh more coffee flavor uh technically they stay i'm okay with all of that it's malt liquor it's not technically beer and it's not actual coffee it's coffee flavored yeah a oh, 4.2 percent sorry 4.2 um but still um oh i don't think we can get it here jeff oh. 30 milligrams of caffeine i didn't read that part i, I just oh. now saw it. each can will also contain 30 milligrams of caffeine we'll have to go to washington to pick we that up. will oh my gosh so yeah if you're if if you get one of these send it our way We'll, we'll, yeah. we'll take it. I'll, I'll try that one. So, yeah, this will be oh, – this one I am looking forward to. I, I will give them a try because the coffee one I did enjoy. We both enjoyed it. Uh, Steve even had it this weekend. Um, if you were on Jeff's Discord, you would have seen him talk about it. So it's – It was um, good. It, it's definitely a little bit sweet. It's sweet. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a Starbucks-like drink, not necessarily for, like, hardened coffee drinkers. Um, but I can go either way. I, I like sometimes sugar through a straw with a little coffee. Sometimes I like a lot of straight black coffee and not a grain of sugar in it. So just depends on where I'm at for the day. Yeah. So I think this is going to lean toward more of the people that like the dark. Sometimes I coffee. want my coffee to fight me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So if you like more of the, the darker coffee flavored, uh, black coffee, I'm betting this might be a little bit more up your alley. I'm, I'm betting we're going to get a lot of dark chocolate um you know coffee yep. notes so that'll be cool coming Sounds out uh, 2021 cool and that's Sounds it for our beer news uh it was kind of a slow week in beer news as well as tech so um we got a couple minutes if you want a couple minutes check. left if anyone wants uh questions any questions comments thoughts what do you want to hear us talk about yeah why haven't you joined the Jeff cat's Discord still being yet? a jerk. Yeah. He's just sitting by the door staring at me. <laughs> Let's see. Paps hard coffee wasn't bad. Yeah. Revs, Rev, Revs agrees with us. Retro gaming. Retro gaming. Um, like what our favorite retro games are? Do we? It's a broad like, topic. That is. That what is do you a, consider retro? Yeah. I mean, 10 years is technically, or 12. Some people, crisis is retro. Yeah. <laughs> I, I try not to associate with them. Um, favorite hop variety. Well, I actually, I, um, I will be doing some retro gaming content here on the channel shortly. Um, I have a couple different pieces that I'm working on. Uh, one of which I have is my first dual processor board. I have my first Xeon motherboard that I ever bought. Um, and... I'm also going to do a piece on what games got me into PC gaming, and I'm going to rebuild a Pentium 1 machine and try to play those games. Um, so I do have some retro content like in the pipeline, and I have the hardware on hand. It's just a matter of when do I want to start putting it together. Um, I want, I want to because see, it's going to take some work. <laughs> I want to see a real-time load of those games. <laughs> When you build that PC. I'll benchmark him if I can. I, I want to see that. And, and I want to see it. just no fast forwarding, no cut. You just load. And I want to watch that thing load. Yep. How long that takes. Yep. No, I've, uh, I'm going to do a full Windows 95 uh, revision B. So USB support. Uh, but uh, um, full Windows 95 uh, build. Uh, might go 98 SE just for ease of use but um no I, I have a pentium box that's ready to be put together um it's not going to be a full retro build it is going to have some modern conveniences so uh compact flash card for a boot drive floppy emulator so i don't have to sit there and load 90 floppies into load windows but it's going to be a fun build uh it's going to be a lot of fun um let's see will i ever do a video on how to update firmware on an lsi controller card uh I might. The problem is a lot of them are different and there's a lot of documentation out there on how to do it already. So I'd be doing a video basically following the steps on another web page. 
Um, so I don't know that I will. Um, even upgrading the LSI firmware on my, uh, gosh, what board did I use? My Super Micro uh, Dual 2011 board. That flashed into an IT mode just fine based on the uh, 9108 card that was in there. That was built into the, or 9211 or whatever the heck the chips that was on that. Um, Kat, you are making me nervous over there. <laughs> Sorry, he's behind my Edison lamp. And all of a sudden it bumped on the wall a couple of times. So I know he's able to like move it. Oh, he is getting big. Yes, he is. That's how big he is now. He's a big boy. Yeah, and it's there there he goes. There he goes. There. Now he's, <laughs> now on, he's camera. on Nick. Yeah. Is everyone happy? There's my cat. Balancing there on your is. chair. And he did that himself. <laughs> well, come on. Nope. He found his down? perch. No, you're just going to sit there and whine? Yeah. Well, you shouldn't have done that, huh? There you go. All right. There he is. Is everyone happy now? Everyone happy? He's going to get up there again. <laughs> all right rambo's been on the show dos 3.3 and win 3.1 those don't work together you need you need win dos 5.0 for uh for windows 3.1 uh you can also do it with windows 6 or with dos 622 so yeah what would you even run on dos 3.0 i mean that's way vintage that's like 286 days what was that? Uh, what was that thing was called Pink Slip? It was like a racing game. I used to play on that. Hmm. That might have been five zero. Yeah. Because it had color. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it had color. Uh, retro minimum in nineties. Uh, so we're talking what Nintendo and Super Nintendo? Go with NES or Sega. Um, I I was a split family. I had both. Uh, I, so. I was a Nintendo. We had a Sega for like two weeks and the guy I bought it from nigged heard, on the deal yeah. and wanted it back and then like made his parents come over and demand it back. Um, so yeah, that was interesting. Yeah. It, he, he claimed I cheated him on the deal and I was like, you said you only wanted 20 bucks. Here you go. Yep. You know, so um but yeah we F were we favorite were favorite hop varieties was a question that came up uh most of mine are are so i got like my three particular favorites especially for an ip is like it's like citra mosaic and like willamette because yep. the willamette will give a nice bittering the citra and the mosaic give it that just enough tropical but still a it, the citra mosaic were like right in the in, that in between of the hazies mm-hmm and it's brought in a little bit of tropical, but still very bittering. Yep. There are some crazy hop pellet blends, and now there's the cryo hop stuff that's coming out. And actually, yeah, I, yeah, you can get into some really crazy stuff like Galaxy and Simcoe. And... Yeah, um, <laughs> there's there's now a new thing. I was talking to Crosby Hop Fields and um, Ratchetbury, and there's going to now be proprietary cryo blends. And so essentially it'll be like, you can only get this one blended hop that'll be patented by this hop field yeah. or this hop brewery, you know, um, hop farmer. And so that'll be a very special specialty thing. So next year we're going to be seeing a lot of weird, like C seven, four, 12 X or, you know, cryo hop yeah. or the, you know, Crosby hop, whatever. You know, so that's going to be pretty interesting. Um, it, it'll be weird. I think we're going to get some weird blends coming up next year. One hop I really personally hate, actually, is a new one. It's called Idaho 7. I've I had hate, that one. I agree. I hate Idaho 7. There's there's just something about it I do not like. Every beer I've ever seen it in, I've never enjoyed it. And I have people sit there and state that it's wonderful. I'm like, nope, I don't like nope. it. 
No. There's just some weird off-putting flavor. Probably the funniest thing I think that's ever happened on this channel was when we got a beer from Ireland and it said it has these really, uh, really unique hops in it. They're from the Pacific Northwest and they're literally grown down the street from us. So someone sent us a beer from Ireland that was more local to us than it was to them. Yeah. It was it was pretty funny. He was like, oh, this is a rare thing. You're going to love it. Like, it was this... Willamette and Mosaic, I think. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, we get that. Jeff's like in his backyard. Well, the Willamettes are over it. there. <laughs> yeah. And I smell the mosaics on my way home every yeah. day. Like, yeah, we got that. It was like, that. this is basically like every home brewer's beer. Because it wasn't anything, I think it was like a pale or, or a, a, a basic IPA. It was like a 6% IPA. Yeah. It, was, it was fine. It, it was, was good. Like, no, again, yeah, it was yeah. fine. Yeah. But it was like, I think you had it. I think the three of us, I don't think Rhett was there when you opened it. Yeah. But we had it and it was, yeah, this is just like a home brewer beer. Yeah, you know? standard Standard IPA that we Standard get IPA. all the time. Yeah. But it, it was just really funny. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, anyway, I think that's going to pretty much do it for the show. Uh, more hop strains than yeast strains. Yeah, the yeast is becoming an interesting one because those are starting to uh, become a marketable item. And we use this, this strain of yeast and this type of yeast and that kind of thing. Yeah, why yeast is actually expanding. Uh, they're one of the largest um, yeast distributors and they're mm -hmm. even expanding. They used to uh, do this really cool thing where they, they put them in tubes, mm -hmm. uh, like little plastic test tubes. And so you can kind of make your own yeast and give it to your friends. Now they've uh, done it and put them in like large ketchup packets, essentially. <laughs> um, so they look like a ketchup packet, packet but really long yeah and uh but it's it's really a neat idea because they are cultivating the yeast inside the bag so what they do is then uh that keeps air out of everything instead of having to pour it into the tube yeah. and they're using one of those hot uh cutters so they're just cutting the plastic the li lineage yeah and so it's keeping all the oxygen out so you're actually technically getting a fresher yeast batch that's kind of cool. So it, is, it was like, oh, that's kind of cool. Also, we uh, we saw those cans of beer. Yeah. Uh, we talked about it where they're like, hey, here's the yeast strain for each of these beers. And yeah. so it was really more accenting the yeast than, than other the hop flavor, the malt than the hop and the malt right. fireball. Yeah. So, no, yeast can make a huge, huge uh, difference. I mean, yeah. just look at European or German beers. Yeah. Um, so I've, uh, I've had a mead that was, uh, made with champagne yeast. It was fantastic. Yeah. No. Yeah. And, and a lot of times like, uh, Steve loves using champagne yeast in his cider because yeah. it gives it a bit more crisp. Yeah. Uh, it's flavor, a little drier, a little, a little more crisp. drier, a little yeah. crisper. Uh, champagne yeast is designed to go a higher percentage around 15% where yep. an ale is like 10%, uh, I think 10 or 12 so you can technically, if you wanted to, had a lot of sugars, it can still bump up that. So you can get this really nice dry, uh, again, for the meads, it'll mm -hmm. work. So, yeah. All right. I think that is going to do it here for episode 152 of Talking Heads. Thank you all so much for watching this one. If you liked the video, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. Hit the subscribe. Bell. <laughs> Good night, everyone. <laughs> I was going to give you a plug, but screw it now. If you're subscribed to Hops and Brews, unsubscribe. Make sure to hit the bell for me, too. Yeah. <laughs> subscribe to Hops and Brews as well. If you like the beer content that's on this channel, you'll find that and a whole lot more over on his channel. Uh, follow me on Twitter at Craft Computing. Follow John on Twitter at Hops and Brews. Keep up with our daily shenanigans every single day on there. Uh, if you haven't done so already, consider joining the Patreon. Link is down in the video description below. Minimum contra contribution of $1 per month gets you access to the exclusive Discord server where you can chat with myself, John, Rhett, Steve, and all of the other hosts from Talking Heads. Yes, something just fell because the cat knocked it over. I was like, what happened there? Dong! Yeah, knocked over a case panel. Thank you, Ram. Jerk. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching this one. Uh, and as always, we'll see you here every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Pacific time for the latest in beer and tech news. Yep. See you guys. Later. <laughs>